piece of the family. Let me cut this thing in right here for you. Then we're gonna get to the money. If you don't like money, it makes you uncomfortable, people. Get up out of here as soon as possible. Okay. You gotta get you up out of here if that's how you're feeling. <clears throat> Let me fuss. Okay, good. I'm glad you're ready. I'm looking to see if I see my brother, the one in here. My phone is fully charged, people. It's fully charged. We about to do this. Hold on, I'm looking for my brother Luan. I don't want to take long. There you go. Oh, hold on. Might be. Boom. Put the flowers in the background. I want people to see my flowers now. So this is just a little subconscious play that I'm making. Get my flowers now. <laughs> give my flowers now. <laughs> give my, I see you in the back. We're going to give you your flowers now, too. That's what we got to do. We just got to start putting flowers in the background. Instead of <laughs> I got some. They kind of, uh, they're not alive, but they are back there. <laughs> hey, at least they did. <laughs> <laughs> Peace to my brother. Peace to you. Peace All right, to you. I see you feeling like a big today. That's great. I ain't got to be on the stream. It's first. <laughs> Yo, it's lockdown time, man. <laughs> okay. So, yeah, we just going to talk to y'all. Like I said, people, you know, you have the rated R, the PG-13. But this right here, this is for the adults. You know, this is for people that are serious and so I'm not going to even hold you any longer. Hey, peace to the family. Peace to you. Peace to you. I see y'all coming into the chat, climbing in there. First of all, you know, we got class this Sunday at IamBrotherPolite.app. That's the website. You can sign the class. It is $99. You also have the credit restoration microwave. Let me just get that up out the way. Okay, that's when we remove all the negative items off your report, boost your credit score. We'll be doing that inside of two to three weeks. That's the first part. Then the second part is we're going to create an opportunity after having removed all the negative items off your report and add positive items to your report, after then boosting your credit score, okay? Then we're gonna leverage that newly found status to see to it that you get approved for in or around one-tenth of a million. I know you're like, what, one-tenth of a million? Because when you talk to our people, the numbers sound too big. You gotta lie and tell them a smaller number. But the reality is, you, everyone is entitled to six figures lines of credit. Everyone is entitled to have at least a six figure line of credit. And if you have never been given that before, don't make them trick you into the debt they put you in now, or you may have worked alongside them to get yourself into that. Don't be fooled and think you do not have the right to at least mess up $100,000 at least once in your life. And when I say mess it up, I'm not talking about that Fugazi credit. I'm not talking about when they give you a loan so you could buy a house, but you never saw the money so you can manipulate it yourself. But mm -hmm. then when you pass due on your payments, you have to give them real cash dollars for the fake electric money that they said that you owe. I'm not talking about that type of money. Mm -hmm. I'm not talking about student loan type of money, okay? Where you wind up owing $80,000, $100,000. I'm talking about cash I mean, electric on hand, whether it be through your credit cards, your personal loans, or your business loans, you are entitled to that. But the first thing we have to do is remove all your negative items. Add some positive items to your report. Boost your FICO score. Boost your advantage score. Okay, we have to send correspondence to LexisNexis on your behalf. We have to send correspondence to checks systems on your behalf. This is a conversation for another time. But that's the credit restoration microwave. You contact me at the uh, email for that, which is brotherpolite45 at gmail.com. Make sure you spell the name right, polite. Pride, optimism, love, integrity, gallant, honesty, and trust. P-O-L-I-G-H-T. Brotherpolite45 at gmail.com. You leave your full name and your phone number for our CRM or our credit restoration microwave or for consultant. Consultant 
myself, consulting with Brother Lawan. Consultations all go through Brother Polite45 at gmail.com. Never leave your name without leaving your phone number. That's what that's for. So you do that. Let's get that out the way. Right now, you know, we're in a dilemma. The dilemma that we're in has nothing to do with coronavirus. Well, it has a lot to do with it, but not based on what you would probably can see your first time around thinking about what I'm talking about. The dilemma we're in is do we use tax liens to make this money or do we use the stock market to make this money? We find ourselves in this dilemma because both of them are extremely lucrative. So, I'm going to talk to you about one play. And, of course, you guys are going to get this information this Sunday. Those of you that signed up for the class or at IamBrotherPolite.app, for those of you that's going to sign up for class at IamBrotherPolite.app, you go over there and you purchase your class. It's right there, 10 to the top. It's insane. If anyone comes out of the coronavirus broke, if you come out the coronavirus situation with less money than you had coming in, if you did not, if you did not amass certain wealth post coronavirus, I would even dare to say three months from the time that I start teaching, I can't speak to nobody else. And I know what they say. Yo, know, you invest money in the stock market, it's gonna go to hell. Your money's gonna disappear. But that is for the uneducated people that make subscriptions to the narrative of wealthy people. Why? Wealthy people were spending $200 a stock, a share, $300 a share, $500 a share, $280 a share. Those same shares today are $8 for us, $5 for us, $10 for us. They're in reach, and they got you guys thinking you have the same problems as your wealthy peers. No. The two can't make sense at the same exact time. If they are having hardships in the economy, this is a blessing to you in this present day economy. And I'm gonna also say this. I want you guys to listen clearly, 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 clearly. Listen very clearly to this. In what era in American history, in what era during American history were the most millionaires birth. When did we have the most millionaires emerge out of nowhere? Great Depression. That's the question. When did we have the most millionaires emerge in American history? The great it was during the 1920s, during the Great Depression. Right. How did the economy look? If you look at the economy, the only thing identical or close to how the economy had looked in 1929 is how our economy looks right now. <laughs> our economy looks identical to the economy of the 1920s where the millionaires were birthed at such an extent that is marked in American history as the time where the millionaires were born. More millionaires were born in the 1920s during the Depression than any other time in American history. So it stands the reason that we should ask, what took place then? Because if the economy was bearish, if we were in a bear market or the economy was on decline, what in fact was the reason why so many people were able to become millionaires during that time. We need to ask that question. And when we ask that question, question, we need to line up our findings to see if any of them run concurrent with this present day and time. And I will tell you, almost in every instance, the very things that made people millionaires in the 1920s, we are subject to the same circumstances on to this very day. And the same people that were disconnected then would represent the same demographic that's disconnected now. But the only difference being social media and someone has an opportunity to reach out to thousands of you at one time. You make sure you share this video 
with your brothers and sisters because I put out a lot of free information and I know how we think sometimes. We don't value free information. We value information we can't afford. We don't value information we understand because it's too simplistic. We value information we don't understand. This is the weird thing. And so it keeps us always away from the money and from the knowledge. And the two of them run concurrent. We don't like it if it's too simple. It makes us insecure because if it's so simple, how come we ain't been learning this? This is what we say. <laughs> right. We need that complex information that's too difficult to execute. We need that expensive opportunity that's too costly to afford. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We need to make sure we can't afford it to believe in it. And now that we believe in it, well, it's out of touch. So now you have an opportunity. And I also know I'm way too damn dark to know this information anyway. And let's just add that to the table. I'm way too dark. My shirt too dark and my complexion too dark. I need to lighten up. I know what it is. <laughs> I know exactly what it is. But the fact of the matter is you can do your own vetting process and you can look up this information. And truth be told, our economy looks equal to the time that the economy was similar to this one in the 1920s. And that was a time where all the millionaires were birthed. Why? Because everything was cheaper. Why? Because you can invest in people's past due delinquent property taxes, people's past due delinquent utility bills. And you can pay your bills by paying other people's bills. Damn it, you might even get an award if you pay enough of those bills for people. <laughs> okay, this is a fact. Stores are going to close. Storefronts is going to be easier to buy and walk into. Equipment is going to be easier to purchase because people are going to have to sell their equipment for a cheaper price. Everything you was probably planning to do if you were, in fact, an entrepreneur or an industrialist, everything is more at your disposal now. But the question you may say is, but I ain't even got the money to start anything up now. And that's not a damn excuse. And I'm going to explain to you why. But I'm going to let my brother go in. Talk to us about some real estate real quick. Talk to us about tax liens. Because what we got to understand is your mortgage, <laughs> your property tax are two different things, even if it looks like it's one. But let you get behind in your mortgage, a distinction will be made. You need to pay your property taxes. And property taxes are allocated in millages to fund your public schools and the materials thereof. Property taxes from properties. Property taxes are used to pay for public service men and women. It's used to pay for your doctors. It's used to pay for those hospitals, for those street lights, for the roads and the highways to be smooth. It's used to pay for law enforcement. Okay? That's what property taxes pay for, not limited to, because there's many more things that property taxes are used for. So your county government relies on people to pay their property taxes. In turn, they will either give you a profit if it's reconciled or if anyone redeems from being behind because you get X amount of time to be behind on your property taxes before they create a tax lien. That tax lien represents the debt obligation beholden to the property owner who went delinquent in their property taxes beyond the period of time they allow you to go delinquent before they have the right to solicit your debt to someone else in the form of a tax lien. And in that period, that period is called the redemption period now that you have to pay before they can say, you know what, if you invest in it, we'll give you the property. But we won't just give you the property. If no one redeems, if the bank doesn't pay on your behalf, and we could talk about that, the government doesn't pay on your behalf, we could talk about that because that's kind of like the direction you're going in, then guess what? If someone pays... They pass through delinquent property taxes. They also have to pay late fees, penalties, and surcharges. That's going to go to you for investing in their pass through delinquency. However, if no one pays, you're going to get the property for the amount equal to the delinquent property taxes. So if I buy, if I invest in, let's say, $1,600 in delinquent property taxes for a property that's worth $200,000 and no one redeems, I essentially get that property, not counting the, the right to foreclosure fee and all that other stuff. I essentially get that property for the amount equal doing back taxes, which is $1,600. I get the 200 plus thousand, the 300 plus thousand dollar property, not for what it is worth, but based on what the property taxes are. 
Do you believe, family, that a lot of people will not be able to pay their property taxes during this hour? Do you believe that forbearance that they're giving everybody? Let me let me make this clear in case we, we're not sure because everybody's at different levels. The monies from the stimulus check that they're giving you, you do know that when they give you the twelve hundred dollars, that's a tax credit. And you do know what a tax credit is. And that means they're paying you your own money. They didn't when they say we was pulling some money out to stimulate the economy, that's to bail out the bigger businesses. They gave you guys your own money. And if you owed any money, that's gonna be deducted from that money when you get it. Or next year, you'll dub on that money that you got today. It's a tax credit. That's what it is. It's, you gotta look at the words, you gotta look at the fine line. So the forbearance that you get from your real estate, you need to pay attention to that. Because if they let you off for three months or six months where you don't have to pay, I please understand you're gonna have to pay it eventually. This is not a get out of jail free card. This is not a, well, we're just, the government loves us and they throwing us checks. Yo, I'm sitting here, well, at least I got my check, at least I ain't got to pay my bills. Listen, fam, you're going to be out of your tax income tax return and <laughs> your house if you don't start really getting yourself together and qualify some of the actions and incentives that is being presented before you by way of the ignorant, okay? So I want you guys to be clear that houses, the 580 credit score, where you used to be able to get a house and just have incredible interest, which was still prison, the 580 credit score, the new 580 is 640. Why is 580? Why is 640 the new 580? Because lenders know they are in a mess because lenders know the amount of foreclosures is going to have to go on the rise. Lenders know people are not going to have the money to maintain any type of 30-year fixed rate mortgage. Lenders know the economy is not even stable enough to trust people in the same capacity they used to when they would help you boost your credit score to put you in a debt that they knew you wouldn't be able to afford anyway. Because when they give you a house, they already determined how much you could afford and then they jack up the price because they anticipate on you going into default. It's not designed really for you to be able to pay the property in this lifetime. It's designed for you to go into default because they got a surety in place. So the underwriters over there working in collusion, okay, with these real criminals selling you properties for amounts that they know you wouldn't be able to afford upon the maturation date. Because they know that it's insured, so they're going to get their money one way or the other and then sell the property back later on. I just want to give it context. I want you to understand that none of these people are for you, and these are the only people that you rely on for your education. Because from pre-K to 12th grade, you went to school from pre-K to 12th grade for 14 years, and they never taught you how to be a first-time homeowner. They never taught you how to fill out the application. They never taught you about credit repair. They never taught you about TransUnion, Asperian, Equifax, check systems, FICO scores, advantage scores. They never told you about 609 letters. They never told you about any of these things. They never told you if you're a serial return artist, if you're a person that likes to buy clothes <laughs> and you are return it because you got stuck with a band to pictures at the club, you know what? You got into the game and said, well, God, I'm going to keep buying clothes that I can't be seen in twice. I'm going to return these clothes. They never told you that when you do those reward programs that you cannot deny. When you do those sign-up programs, let me know what's going on, that they're reporting the CDAs, consumer data aggregates, and then they're doing the analytics on the type of people that are serial return artists and the likelihood of them falling behind in their bills because of the decisions that they make. And then they find out that the people who tend to return their clothes the most have a higher risk rate when you loan them money. And you now put yourself in a category that when you would have been approved for $100,000, you'd be lucky if you get approved for less than ten. We don't understand this, but this is called CDAs. When you go on the line, when you're on the internet and you're looking up sneakers that don't appraise for more money, when you're looking up cars that don't appraise for more money, you don't realize that CDAs are sending this data to bureaus. Consumer data aggregates are sending this data to the bureau so they can have an interpretation of your predictability as a consumer. You don't realize this. This sounds like a matrix, like I'm making it up. 
but these are facts. Come these on. stone cold facts. Come on. They don't tell you when you use your credit card. Watch this. You guys are paying rent and your credit card is overwhelming you. How the hell could you pay your light and your gas bill, but your credit card remains the same every month? Because they got you spooked out. They got you so afraid of that plastic card. After a while, you might even separate it from your wallet and leave it in your house. They got you afraid. But you should never pay your bills and still owe on your credit and have a poor utilization ratio. What you need to do is start putting all your cash on your card if you know you're going to spend it anyway. If you know you're going to spend your money on groceries, if you know you're going to spend it on your light, if you know you're going to spend your money on your gas, what you do, you put the money in your credit card and then you use your credit card. And what you do when you put all that money in your credit card, just don't touch it on the day of your billing statement or the day before. Why? Because that's when it's time to snitch. So what you do, if you know you're going to spend money every month on your light, your gas, your phone bill, on groceries, you find that day where that billing statement is, which is probably on the 15th maybe, then you don't spend on the 14th and you don't spend on the 15th. If you can, don't spend on the 16th. Reporting takes place the day of that billing statement. But I like everyone to have a cushion. And what you do, you put all that money in, you pay your bills, and you don't use that card for the day before billing statement, the day of. What happens is they'll report, yo, this person paid their whole credit card off, or they paid more than, they have less than 36.6% due of their credit. It's going to raise your credit utilization ratio, and you're going to see an immediate impact on your credit score, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 points up, all right? And now, when the snitch day is over, when nobody's snitching, the snitches are gone, then you use all that money and you blow up your card all over again and buy all the shit that you got to buy, even if you live in check to check. When you do that, you've done two things effectively. When you do this, you have just made, created a situation, you've leveraged, you just created a situation where the, the word goes on the streets, we can trust this person with money. Another thing that you're doing is increasing your utilization ratio. So let me tell you like this. If you have a $1,000 card limit, you're not supposed to use more than 36.6%. So you're not supposed to be using more than $366.66. Let's say that. And if you have several places where you have credit, the combination of all those things should not add up over 36.6%. So use 10% from one card. You shouldn't use 26.6% on all the other lines of credit that you have, wherever it may be, whatever it may is, whatever it is. But let's stick to the game plan. If you have a $1,000 credit card limit, what you want to make sure is that you use more than 1000 if you can, on a month-to-month -month basis. But when they report, you're using less than 36.6% of it. So what this would mean is if I have a $1,000 card limit and I manage to use $3,000 out of a $1,000 card, most of us don't even practice that thinking. I use 3000 from a limit that gives me 1000 How is that so? Because when I spend, I, if I go out to dinner with six people, right, and everybody, there's a bill, I say, yo, we don't need no separate bills, fam. Everybody give me your bread, and guess what I'm going to do the next day? I'm going to take, I'm going to swipe my card and pay for everybody's food, and I'm going to take everybody's money, and I'm going to pay my bill the effective immediately, even if the damn bank is open after that dinner, I'm going to go down there and I'm going to pay the bill. Why? Because now I'm going to get the credit for using $500. I'm going to get the credit for using $500. I want as much credit as possible because if they give me a $1,000 limit, I want to see how much I can average over 1000 every month. But when it's time for the billing statement, on that day and the day before, everything is clear. I'm paying for everything. But then when that billing statement is done, I will spend everything again. Don't ever pay your bills and owe on your credit card. Don't ever have cash on hand and don't pay your credit card. It's not the bank. People ain't going to just snatch your money out of nowhere on your credit card. People spend on their debit card like it's their damn credit card. It makes no sense. Oh, because they got you. Yo, if you use your debit card 12, 15 times a month, we won't charge you for holding your money. They take your goddamn money out of that bank. They full of shit. Put that money in your credit card. Because now what they'll see is after 12 months, they, they expect you to spend less than $12,000 or be in trouble several times, more than 12 times in a year. But what happens is, let's say I'm spending $3,000 on average on a month-to-month -month basis. I only have a $1,000 credit card limit. 
then that means I have spent $36,000, where it only made sense that I should be able to spend $12,000 because of the limit. But I've never been snitched on where I owed any money because I take all my money for my bills and everything and put it on my card a day before it's time to report. So the day after they report, then I pay for everything. So now they got me making, they got me spending three times that of the limit they gave me and never in trouble for owing any money because nothing's ever due the day they have to report. At that particular time, they were more than triple what they would allot to me on my credit card. So if I only had $1,000, well, that's $1,000. They're going to do more than triple at that point. If I could show that I could be trusted with $36,000 using my credit card when all they expected of me was to use less than that $12,000 year to year, what's going to happen is it's going to be very easy for me to get $100,000. I'm just telling you the facts. It's going to be very easy for me to get credit cards because my utilization ratio is off the charts because I'm never in trouble. And I'm using way more than the amount of credit that's been allotted to me, but I'm never being reported for using more than 36.6 because when it's time to report, I don't owe nothing or I owe a minimum probably 5%. And that's because some, some damn bill came out of nowhere I anticipate. I'm just, I'm just talking to you. I'm glad the number's going up. Come on. I'm glad for this, for this, for this science because this is real talk. Class is this Sunday. I don't play no games when I do the knowledge. You should get enough free knowledge from me to change your life. Because what we can't have, I cannot have a large following of broke people because I don't teach that. I cannot teach that. And I do not respect it. I abhor anybody to do that. Who on, give me scripture about be, being impoverished is being sin. Give me, give me something good. Who wants <laughs> a pastor? I, I need that work. Give me something for our religious brothers and sisters. Yes, sir. The Messiah, Yahshua, said that he had become poor so that you may become rich. Say it again. Jesus Christ himself. The said Messiah, Yahshua, said that he had become poor so that you may become rich. He has become poor so that you may become rich. Now, what I'm saying is, we know the Bible ain't my cup of tea, but we got to get our motivation so, from wherever we can get it. So even the Messiah... And I ain't against that doctrine. He my Messiah, he talking that. I tell you that. That he has become poor so that we may be made rich. Yes, so sir. You use the Bible for your motivation. Don't tell us all this other stuff about the love of money is the root of evil and, and it's been taken out of context when they use the words wrong. But it's all good. Don't look for the things that keep you disempowered. Don't look for the things that keep you impoverished. Find your motivation in any and everywhere you can get it. I don't care where you get it from. If you get it from the Quran, if you get it from the Bible, if you get it from your mother, you get it from your lover. doesn't matter. Find motivation in what you do. Stop watching all that gossip is affecting your credit score. If it ain't affecting your credit score, it's affecting lenders and their interpretation of who you are because they're collecting data about us. You think it's a coincidence when you just listen to someone talking about the stock market and then when you turn this off, commercials about the stock market pop up? That's the internet of things. And with this rollout with 5G, it's going to get even more technical, the degree of information that they have. If you ever filled out uh, an application, let's say, to set up a bank account with Fidelity, yo, they start asking you questions about the names of people. Are these names or addresses? Do you recognize them? And you go back, you start getting spooked out, like, yo, how they know my ex 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 girlfriend? How they know my school teacher name? You look at that and you say, yo, and they're doing this as an identity or as an identifier to qualify if they're talking to who they need to talk to. You don't forgot about these people that you met. You forgot you lived in that neighborhood. You got to go in your mental Rolodex and say, oh, shoot, this is true. Then you get spooked and you say, how the hell they remember this? I don't remember this about my life. They just brought me back to memory. So if you think that they are not collecting data about your behavior, about the things you are concerned with, so they can use it against you. That's why I talk to you about check systems. That's why I talk to you about LexisNexis, okay? Because the data is being accumulated by CDAs and it's being transferred over to bureaus so they can understand your predictability as a consumer. So they can understand if you are a high risk, which is what LexisNexis specializes in. Are you high risk? So now what I want to do, of course, yeah, classes, I put it in the pen, I pinned it, family. I pinned it. You can see it. It's I am brother polite dot. That's class this Sunday. We don't got no time to play. But right now, let's talk about tax liens, brother. I just wanted to say, land our claims. 
put down a strong foundation because we can't play games with this. Cause right, just, right, right. 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 It took me many years to learn tax lien certificates, and um, and it was well worth the wait. But what I want to say first is that opportunity, right? When it come knocking, you can't treat him like a family member. Oh, he ain't called me first, or she ain't called me first. You got to open up because right now opportunity is knocking at the door. And like the brother said, he said um, that uh, at, at times of great turmoil, when it comes to markets, uh, millionaires are produced. We must take this time to invoke what we've learned all over the because we don't have we we black people we don't we don't have a problem with making money we just we need uh we need to know it all before we even take the first step you don't need to know it all just go just be on go all the time be an executor this is what i tell my students you got to execute all right, because I can give you a whole bunch of information. If you're not an executor, guess what? It ain't going to happen for you. I got some students that uh, inside of six months of taking my class in tax liens, they made $6 million in assets under management <clears throat> in six months. But that's not the same for all of my students because you have to be an executor. No matter what you do or what you learn, you must execute. If you don't do it, it ain't going to get done. You can't wait on everybody else. You can't wait, you, you know, until the time is right for you. Because we got to get rid of that. We just got, when we hear it, we got to move. It's time to move. And right now, let me see, let me tell you about the opportunity that's presented itself. And um, right now, there's even a campaign to stop it from happen, happening. But the delinquency rates have already been recorded by the St. Louis Fed for housing housing and mortgage, and the delinquency rate is rising. And the reason why it's a problem is because the unemployment rate is almost at 30%. And if the unemployment rate is at 30% and the delinquency rate starts to rise as well, we got a real problem, but an opportunity is presenting itself in tax lien certificates. And tax lien, if you, if you make the case and say, all right, I'm going to start, because I always start with planning. Always use Six Sigma principles, you know, go from planning to design, procurement of contractors, uh, construction, uh, operations and maintenance. I always build the pipeline so that I can manage it, all right, because I need processes. I need to build the process and work within it, all right? So I'm always thinking, all right, I'm planning now. And if my planning includes taking in some more knowledge about the subject matter before I move, then that's actually a good thing to do, all right? So I want to... I, I want to say that uh, right now we can we can move forward with the information. All right, tax liens. How do I buy? Where do I buy? What, you, you understand what state should I go in? But I always say this too, as well, when it comes to real estate, a real a bad market. People talk about some. Oh, uh, it's a bad market. Whenever someone says it's a bad market, it's really a, a bad strategy applied to the wrong market. Okay, so we have to look for the markets that are conducive to tax lien certificate investing. All right, so right now the the uh, mortgage delinquencies are spread across the whole United States. Of course, those who are in poverty or or below are, are going to suffer faster than those who are not. So you know that that's that. But right now, what's significant is people that uh, the paper that is AAA paper or you know the. Um, the, the neighborhoods that usually try to economically exclude us, uh, those those people are now defaulting on their mortgages. So we should buy there. Don't be a fool and flip houses and buy houses in the hood. No, 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 no. You flip houses and buy houses in the suburbs where where the values are staying consistent. There's sustainability there. All right. So that's the same thing goes for tax liens. That's where you buy because the opportunity has already presented itself okay and but people are calling me now and they're like what should i be doing what should i be doing you know tax liens tax liens why not tax liens tax liens because we have delinquency rate and mortgages and mortgages is and and uh taxes are usually rolled in together so if one is delinquent, right. the other is delinquent so we must investigate just to see and now a lot of the records are even online where you don't even have to go down to the recorder's office to, uh, to to do that part of your due diligence. You can do it right from your computer. You can take subscriptions. Uh, I, I have all of this data. If you call me for a consultation, I'll give it to you. 
you know, but the thing is, is that um, when we get down to the nuts and bolts and when whoever is an executor, get with me. Follow me on AB Facts and Figures on Facebook, ABF Now on uh, Instagram. Follow me, you know, and send me a private message. I'll get back to you. Everybody who knows me knows I'll get back to you no matter what. Okay. But tax liens have, uh, have, have shown shown themselves to be um it's a fixed, fixed income asset but over time it's just no risk i would say virtually no risk because no risk because you the you can either uh break even or because the the only reason why let me let me go back you can only break even on a tax lien if someone redeems the tax lien within that first uh, week or so. Every state is different. So sometimes it's 12 days, sometimes it's eight or seven, okay? But you can break even, okay? And you may lose your transaction fee. But you will always win in tax liens. And right now, if they, if the campaign is successful against um, uh, uh, tax sales taking place right now, okay, if it's successful, you still have tax liens that are already being sold over the county. So I'll be showing you that as well, where to find them. Because a lot of the sales are going online and a lot of the uh, properties or uh, interest in property, which is a tax certificate is, is being sold uh, um, uh, uh, over the county. All right, so um, uh, what, I, what I want people to do, someone, someone says, how do we start? Listen, I just thought it. I'm I'm gonna, I'm gonna say it like this, and you know, because I I'm on my phone, I can't like pull up the site or anything. But there's uh sites like Lean Hub, right? You can just type it in Google, leanhub.com, and you can uh set up you know an account with them, and they have over 15 counties on Lean Hub. But there's more. There's so much more. There's better paper, you know. That I just that's just the one that comes to mind. We call I'm Lean Hub. Information. Lean. And remember, Hub. during the time of the courses, you get all this data. When you purchase the courses, when you check it out, but right now, take that name since you asked, right. Lean Hub. Leanhub.com. And you guys, you know, you can follow me on ABF Now on Instagram and AV Facts and Figures on Facebook. Okay. And um, of course, uh, Le yes, Le somebody put it in the uh, comments there, Lean Hub. Lean Hub is good. You know, Are you able to raise the volume? One of the sisters says it's a little volume? difficult. Oh, I'm, I can't I'm so sorry. I have the volume all the way up. Uh, and, I, you know, I'm, I'm projecting as well. But I'm sorry, I'm sorry about that. Okay. Um, yes, leanhub.com. Just just go and, and, and check it out. And take and, a look. Uh, <laughs> and Brother Luan, yeah. real quick, for some of the people that may have missed it, what is a tax lien? What is a tax deed? Uh, what's the benefits thereof? Yeah. Okay. Come on, investing in it. Just in case some people missed it, you feel me? Okay, okay, okay. I'm sorry, I didn't want to, you know, double up on what you were what you were teaching because you really gave a very thorough. Yeah, lesson. but you know, the the way we invoke change is yeah. through <laughs> repetition. So okay. let's get it again okay. from a different teacher, and let's keep it, you know, keep it flowing in yeah. case someone it, or they need to hear it a second time for the clip. Absolutely. Okay. When a homeowner uh, becomes delinquent in his taxes, right? They become insolvent. Okay, they can't pay their bill. What the county does is they sell an interest in the property for the amount of back taxes that they owe. So if they owe a thousand dollars, they're going to sell. They're going to sell the tax lien for a thousand dollars, but they're going to uh, start at an interest rate that it, that they want to pay out to a secondary or tertiary party that's going to buy the tax lien as an investment. So it becomes um, uh, 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 very lucrative because some states are all the way up to 36%. So when you go to the auction and they're auctioning off that $1,000 uh, tax lien certificate, they'll start at 36% interest. And then they come down in increments. So it may say, all right, one person will bid 36% interest. The ne next person will bid and say, I'll take it for 35. I'll take it for 30. I'll take it for 16. I'll take it for 12. And then 
they bang the gavel, whoever wins, if they win at 12%, that means that the homeowner, when they go to redeem, when they go to pay their taxes, they have to pay back the $1,000 plus the 16% interest or the 12% interest. And if they let it go too long, they may have an annual penalty of about 6%, depending on the state. Okay, so you're going to make money in between 12 and 36 percent interest on each tax lien is what you are to be paid. That's what makes it so great. I mean, it's better than putting your money into a savings account or, you know, any other inferior investments that don't yield 12 to 36 percent interest. I say that this looks like something I would be interested in. In which I was, and so I went and you know uh, 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 studied. Study. I wrote a book. You know, it's on Amazon now. It's called the Tax Lien Handbook, and I developed a, um, a, the Solo Tax Lien Trust Fund for people who want to build a, a, a family trust, uh, investment trust with tax lien certificates. Because you know, I show people how to build like an independent central bank for their family. So now you can contribute and the system is, is now building, building up cash value and, and policies. And now it's time to, you know, if you have like um, uh, your big ticket items, right? We usually go to the bank and borrow for a car loan, a house loan or a boat loan. What happens is if you build up that solo tax lien trust fund with the family, now you can start to finance those big ticket items within your family. So now you don't have to go outside to get bank credit. Okay. Even though that is a good, good, good way to build wealth, actually building wealth through bank credit is how every other uh, culture that we um, see, we probably won't interface with them and we don't know exactly how they built their wealth, but 99% of the time they built their wealth on bank credit and if we don't have bank regulation that actually uh, 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 favors us then what we'll have is what we have now and we're like scrounging and trying to trying to get up and not really knowing exactly what it takes to get ahead but this is why investing is very very important building revenues is very very important uh, preserving your wealth in, in different vehicles and, and investing in different exchanges is very important. And then there's stewardship. Stewardship is seeing that money from this generation into the second, third, and fourth generation. All right. But that's wow. done by family economics, family governance. And this is what it leads to when you have an investment like this that's so good that's never, ever going to go downward because it's not depending on the Federal Reserve and their rate fluctuations. Because if you follow macroeconomics or if you follow uh, the, the monetary policy, you will see that the, the Federal Reserve Bank, in order to you know boost up the, the economy, what they'll do is they'll lower interest rates okay, and, and, and make it attractive for, for people to get cheaper money, okay? Uh, but we don't always have opportunity like that because the banks don't usually, and that's why what the brother is saying about credit and building that credit score is very, very important because we need access to bank credit, okay? Let's not be, you know, silly and listen to these fake financial advisors out here, you know, that tell you, you know, these, these little... Whatever scams, but I don't want to spend too much information. Yeah, I don't want to spend too much We can, we can tell, we can tell when someone didn't complete the book. That we can tell, we can tell when you took some dynamite information from four or five pages and you right, cast right. out right. ten minutes of the conversation. We right. can tell because, again, this is why I tell everybody all the time. Yo, before you go in polite, I want to talk about something real quick, man. And and, you know, and and I want I want to take a yo I am going off the deep end with this one because I know people love this this brother man his name uh, Robert Kiyosaki right and this is my this is my issue with Robert Kiyosaki because everybody like him right and what I always say he always he got good information right but you know what I noticed about his wealth equation his wealth equation it actually includes bookbinding he's an author 
right? But he doesn't have a book. And he doesn't teach you about how to produce your own book. And the brother up here, man, been teaching y'all how to buy books for years. I remember, <laughs> I, I remember. I remember. See, 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 this this is so easy. Right? We have so much intellectual property up here, we have a lot to offer. But no one's telling us how to tell our story, how to actually buy books. I wrote my best my, my first book because of the influence of this brother. You understand what I mean? But uh, if you read in Robert Kiyosaki's book and not knowing that millions of dollars in revenues is coming in every day from books, then you're missing it. You're missing it. You must produce. Take that intellectual property and put it in books and disseminate it and, and touch that ocean of people on social media just like everybody else. And I know I'm going a little bit outside of, of what the topic is, but it's economics. <laughs> It's economic. We must, we must build revenues. And we must preserve those revenues. And we must be stewards over those revenues if we want to see them into the next generation, third generation, and fourth generation. Don't tell me that we need group economics and we missing it because of unity. We missing it because we don't have common ground. We don't, never, we don't talk about the things that we agree on. We always want to talk about the things we disagree on. We got a problem. Right. Facts. You agree that poverty is the enemy. If poverty is the enemy, then we got to attack it. We can't just have a frontal assault on poverty. We got to have a, outflank, a flank on the right, a flank on the left, an aerial start assault, and a frontal assault. That's why all of this information is conducive to our breaking out of this bondage. And we won't get out of it if we just, just uh, implement one thing two things and always talking about what's a scam. You know what? Nothing is a scam if you read. Nothing. Talk that talk. Nothing is a scam if you read because that's, see, that's the insecure speaking. The insecure speaks about the scam because they don't want to read. They don't want to take the time out. They have the discipline to actually go into subjects like national income accounting, uh, thermodynamics, or um, uh, macroeconomics. Let's talk about energy as it relates to economics. Let's talk about um, family governance. Let's talk about all the subjects, right, that we just shun away because we're afraid. We're afraid to go in deep. We must. I agree. We must and let me go tell you this. Deep. Let me tell you this. It's interesting because the other day I had a sister. I didn't know it was a sister that was offended. I had a sister. I said, man. This ain't no time to be nobody's bitch. You know, I, I just talk to you know. I, <laughs> right? So I'm going in. I'm in. And I'm putting fire on their asses, right? And I'm like, this ain't no time to be nobody's bitch. And I'm going in, and the sister said in the chat, why are you cursing at us? Why are you just cursing at us? I you got to be a fucking idiot. If you find yourself struggling or with less money or wealth after the coronavirus with all the opportunity and all the knowledge that I put forth myself. Anybody listening to me, I commission myself if people take the time out to listen to me. Yes. I have to add value to their life in terms of the things that I find the most important. So I find politics important. So guess what I do? I get people running for political candidacy. And they go, oh, she's a Republican. It doesn't matter. I want you to study policy. I want you to study policy. Vote for the policies you want in. Not necessarily the personality. Yeah. But the right. So I say this, right? I say, yo, I can't front Donald Trump. The economy was in a better space post Obama administration. Oh, you voting for Donald Trump? I didn't say that. <laughs> I don't have to be able to tell you the facts because then as a scholar, it would be disingenuous. It would be this, it, and this is, and scholarship is called an anachronism. And an anachronism is when you misappropriate dates and times to conform to a construct that you want to miseducate people about. So I can't tell you a lie because it'd be more befitting for the lie to be associated or attached to a personality that we already have a predisposition where we say we don't like him anyway. 
What we're talking about is what works so we can commission other people to keep that working. And when he's gone, hopefully you don't do what he has done in the interim. Yeah. That's a good thing that he actually did. It. But if all you know is the gossip associated to this man, but you don't know the policies where prison reform is way better. We've had thousands of black men released from prison under Trump's administration. It doesn't matter if he's trying to win the black vote with this. Yo, you know what? Anyone that's in office <laughs> should be trying to win the black vote. What the hell is your problem? Now when you get up your way, you get upset. I'm, right. And they, what? People think that this is a cookbook to get people to vote for Trump because they get so distracted so because they, they're so manipulated by yes. issues that don't make them money that they don't concern themselves with policies. They concern themselves with personality. Yeah. So Democrats and Republicans alike and liberals, anybody, can come on my forum if you say something that appeals to my interest. That's it. Yes. If most of the things you say appeals to my interest and it caters specifically, specifically to our people, you can get on. But let me go back. I told everyone this is no hour to be anyone's bitch. I know words are our GPS to reality, but when we talk in this talk, I said, you have to be a goddamn idiot, a jackass even, <laughs> to find yourself impoverished or struggling post-coronavirus. And people said, yo, hold on. Yo, the sister said, but, you know, some of us are sisters in here. And, you know, well, listen, let me tell you something. If I was on a football team, no one would make concessions to my emotions because there's an agenda at hand and you have to put a certain level of conviction in your speech, in your deliberation, so it can register to the receiver. If I were boxing, I would have a trainer, and he may have to talk to me. He may have to dig deep into me, because he knows that I give him enough respect and trust that if he had to castigate me at a certain moment, if he had to be super critical of me at a moment's instance, yeah. if he had to be cynical or pessimistic, because I haven't given him what he knows my potential to be. He would be commissioned. He would have the right to speak to me in any manner he chose. And then I would be less of a man and less accountable if I didn't accept it from someone that I said I trusted prior yes. to the contention. And if I play basketball, it's not going to be a walk in the park if my coach knows I'm supposed to play at the highest level, I'm supposed to play based on my potential, and he sees otherwise, he has the right to call me out on it. So I told the sister. She said, I'm calling everyone names. The sister said, you're calling us names. I said, hold on, sister. I said, you would be a jackass. And I said, this is no time to be anyone's bitch. That's what I said. I don't talk to my people like that. I don't call them names. That reality. You would have to render onto yourself that reality if that happened. Because when it comes time to play football, and basketball, we get coaches. When it comes time to box, we get trainers. But when it comes to making this money, we have nobody. Nobody commissions us to do better. Nobody holds us accountable. So what I'm saying is, sometimes we got to put foot to ass. I'm not calling you a bitch. I'm not calling you a jackass. I'm saying you need to feel like one. If you come out of this virus, and you don't have more than you ever had before because the opportunities that exist right now are the same opportunities that exist in the 1920s during the Great Depression where the most millionaires in American history were birthed. Our economy looks identical to the time of the Great Depression when in American history, no more millionaires were birthed at that rate other than that time that looks equal to now. So what can I do? You want me to pussyfoot around it? You want me to 
tink, twinkle toe and the tulips around it. No. What I must do, like your basketball coach would do, like your boxing trainer would do, is what no one has done with us with economics. Because what's the name of the person that does that for you when it comes to making money? As I told you before, from pre-K to 12th grade, you didn't have no knowledge in credit. You didn't learn about advantage scores or FICO scores or consumer data aggregate. You didn't learn about the UCC1 uniform commercial code and financing statements. You didn't learn about administrative affidavits or specific negative avertments with opportunity to cure and counterclaim and admiralty. You didn't learn about purchase agreements. You didn't learn about earnest money deposits. You didn't learn about put options and call options and leap options. You didn't learn about hedging. You didn't learn about margin and, and buying on margin. You ain't learned about, but you went to math class and they showed you graphs and they showed you charts, but they made no connection between you and the information and how you can use it to survive or pay your bills. Right. You went to biology class and you barely remember a damn thing, but they didn't tell you how you have T cells that are neighborhood watch that go around the body and they patrol to see if they see signs of invaders. They didn't tell you about CRISPRs, clustered regularly into space, short paradromic repeat. They didn't tell you about these things, mm -hmm. where a bacteria collects data from the virus and then spreads that information to the rest of the bacteria so they can have intel on the agent that is the bacteria that gives them misinformation to destroy the community. They didn't give you information in such a way that you could connect with it and say, oh, that's the agent, that's Neighborhood Watch. And when an infected cell realizes that it's infected, it puts a plasmate or some kind of protein to stick out so that the Neighborhood Watch T cell can see it and say, oh, we got to destroy the cell because this virus is likely to make 1,500 to 3,500 of its kind before it eliminates the cell. And if those 1,500 to 3,500 viruses deploy into the community, those 1,500 to 3,500 will make another 1,500 to 3,500 per cell they infect. So the cell itself might create a mechanism called apoptosis to self-destruct. But if it yeah. doesn't get a chance to do it because the virus catches on that it's about to create a self-destruct mechanism, then we got to rely on the T cells to know, hold on, there's a sign that one of the cells been infected. Because that's neighborhood watch and they patrol. You see, if they taught us biology like this, and we knew what endocytosis was and exocytosis and lysosomes and rough endoplasmic reticulum and Golgi apparatus or Golgi body and uh, reverse transcriptase, okay, and RNA polymerase enzymes. If we knew about any of these things and they put it into a context where our life depended on it and they put it in a context where you can say, that's the snitch, that's the agent, that's the dope boy, that's the spy, that's the covert operative like the government did to us. That's COINTEL Pro. Then we would be able to say, oh, Beth, I know exactly what that is. But they never made a connection with the information for you to be able to retain it, for you to be able to assimilate it. Yeah. All those things I was in math class, and now I deal with the stock market. And I say, yo, they could have told me a put option and a word problem. Hey, a put option is equal to 100 shares. And if Michael buys a put option for three cents, that means three cents times 100, which is $3. But Michael instead decides that he wants to buy 10 put options, okay? Which gives him the right to how much yet? Well, each put option is 100. He bought 10. He now has 1,000 put options. How much did it cost him to have the right to own 1,000 shares into the future? It cost Michael $30 because it cost him three cents times 100 to get to $3, and he bought it 10 times, so it cost him $30 to own 1,000 shares into the future. Now, what happens? Well, what is the extrinsic value, and what is the intrinsic value? The intrinsic value is the premium that you bought it for at $0.03 cents an option at $3 on each one. But later on in the future, the stock that he bought for $10 is now $15. How much money did Michael make? And does it make sense for him to own the right to those shares, purchase and execute, or does it make more sense for Michael to sell the contract? See, these are word problems that if I know what I'm doing because the premium is raised, 
three dollars and I'm making three hundred on every contract, it may not suffice for me to own each of the hundred shares based on the only the five dollar difference. I say I'm gonna opt out of that and I'm gonna just buy, I'm gonna just sell the contract. You see, but this wouldn't even make sense to anybody because who are the ones that we gotta rely to to teach us this? The person that you tell. Hey, don't call me no bitch. Well, you will never make it in sports and, and you have to start making money be your sport. Make money, sport. Make Making money, sport. And if we make yeah. money, sport, then pardon me, I don't talk like that because on my free time, I don't even use vulgarity. But I understand the level of aggression that we have to put towards fighting poverty because poverty is the damn devil. That's right. Let's go. If you don't believe poverty is the devil, go where people are in poverty. That's right. Poverty is the devil, and it is not our ultimate destiny. We have the right to be ministers of our own destiny. And in order to fulfill that prophecy, we have to educate ourselves so we can execute, not vice versa. We've been executing this whole time. We've been executing ourselves. That's what we've been doing because we got a lack of knowledge. So we're destroyed because we don't got no damn information. Come on. This is just like a disease. And the number one reason for disease is poor circulation. That's when the disease really kills you. Ooh. They got to cut a foot off. They got to cut a leg off. They got to amputate something. You know why? Because when you don't have enough circulation, it's poisonous. It becomes toxic. Well, guess what? The biggest disease we got in our community is being ignorant on account to a lack of information. And that's because the information has been poorly circulating in our community. Come on, you, can, you can recite songs verbatim, but then when it's time to teach you this real talk, now we include, yo, you might lose. You know what's so crazy? I talked to a dope boy the other day, and I said, listen, you can buy into the future a call option. You know, I'm breaking it down. You can own 100 shares, but you don't necessarily have to multiply that by the dollar amount that it would cost in the future and do the difference and sell it for that unique price. You ain't got to necessarily do that. All he can talk to me is about the possible losses of his money. And for the life of me, for the sisters that prostitute themselves, and for the brothers that sell the drugs, I don't understand why they talk to me about risk. Mm. Am I a fucking idiot? Complain <laughs> <laughs> to me about risk. And you risking your freedom to do what you're doing. Woo. You risking STDs to do what you do. And I'm telling you to risk three dollars to own a hundred or something into the future. And if it doesn't work out and it's not be fitting for you to invest, you lose three dollars. But if it does work out, it stands to reason you make three hundred to thousands of dollars plus. Yeah. This is what I teach in my stock class. But people telling our people, yo, but the volatility of the market. You know, there's a big loss you might get. And I'm like, yo, fam, I'm teaching my people about $3 losses and $30 losses. And if you do it 10 times, even if you only write two out of the 10 times, the one time that you write puts the bill for all 10 times you pay, plus you get your profit. You only got to so write $3 times 10. And I set my situation up like that. Then one thing that I do write paid the bill for me to have the opportunity in the first place. What's wrong with people? Come on, man. They got you worried about the boogeyman. Because when people tell me about risk, yo, you know, you don't want to invest in the stock market because at any point something could go down. Then insure it. Insure it by creating a put option. In reverse, you want your stock to go up. You pay in case it goes down. And if it goes down, you make money in case it goes down. In many instances, the way that I insure my stock if it goes down, I make more money than if it goes up. So damn it, even when I win, I even when I win, I win. And even when I lose, I win more. Let's go. I put a put option on my stock that I hope to go up. So if I lose, I'll be celebrating. Because I made more than if I won. And I'll limit my loss. I can limit my loss by 10% if it goes down this far. Stop it. Don't let nothing happen to my 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 stock or my holdings. I don't got the intention of 42 for it to go this low with the belief it might go up. I put a put option on it. Now I've hedged my bet, so to speak. Oh, that's what they call it. Now I'm in good, I'm in good standing. All I gotta do is do the work. Because if I lose, I win, and if I win, I win. In fact, a lot of times I don't even want to win the way I insure my product. I actually want to lose. 
So what I ask people is when they say, yo, I lost all my money in the stock market. I told the sister about the stock. She said, yo, my friend told me he was doing it for 10 years and it didn't work out and he lost all his money. So I said, let me ask you, son, how long you know him? Was it over 10 years? She said, yes. I said, in the 10 years that you know him, did he ever teach you the stock market? She said, no. I said, he had a 10-year stint with the stock market. <laughs> she said, in all 10 years? How stupid would he have been if he was doing the same damn thing for 10 years and wasn't making money? So how the hell could he tell you he was doing something for 10 years and he lost it all? Don't do it. What the hell did he do? And is there only one thing or a multiple amount of things that you can do on the market? Because mm. I can tell you, there's index funds, there's leap options, there's put option, there's cold options, there's covered out. In fact, there's options alone. You got a plethora of things that you can invest in. There's ETFs. You don't have to invest in the individual. You can invest in the sector. What was he doing? Was he doing everything that anyone can conceive on the stock market? Or was he playing around? When I tell people, I created a BPB 10 system. That's my brother's life based 10 system. That if I can do the same thing 10 times, and it can guarantee me that if I just get one of those things right, it puts the bill for everything else, and I make a profit that one time, I'm willing to do it again the second time and walk out even if I walk eight times and I still win it. I'm good money. But I got to ask people, would any of you out there, yeah, classes this Sunday, I am Brother Polite, that app is right there, appended to the top, classes this Sunday. I got to ask the family out there. The stocks are horribly low. Airlines that used to cost $80 a share are now down to $8 a share. Ships for cruises that used to be $160 a share are now down to $20 a share. <clears throat> Hotels that were $100 a share are now $18 a share. Social distancing is in. Hotels are not allowed to function. Planes only got five to 10 people on there. Boats can't even go nowhere and take no one on a cruise. <clears throat> if the world does not end, if you had to roll the dice into the future, would you believe that the hotel industry, would you believe that the airline industry, would you believe that the cruise line industry may not necessarily go back to the same dollar amount it would be? But would it be safe that a year from now, if something is 10 times lower than it normally is, that it might be two times bigger a year from now? That if something is eight times smaller than what it normally is, that it might be three times more than it is a year from now? Is it just sensible to believe that whatever's low right now, most likely, will be high in the future? And let me ask you another question. Zoom, the application that people are using to stream online and put multiple people on at a time, it was $40 six months ago. Because everyone has to stay home, one can surmise, this must be the reason why it's $160 right now. Right. Let me ask y'all a question. Where we no longer have to social distance, do you believe one year and change from now that Zoom might be less than it is right now? That this influx only comes about from the fact that people have to be home? Do you believe what the Netflix is worth right now it's safe to surmise that it's probably going to be lower when people have to leave their house again, go back to work again. Nobody needs that bill again. Do you believe that? Because if you have enough sense in your head to look at 10 different sectors of business and conceive or conceptually say, you know what, I believe these businesses are going to be up on the stock market because they're 10 times lower than they normally are. And that's probably because no one can't do a damn thing. It's just a lucky guess. <laughs> and likewise, the businesses that obviously flourish because of the situation, do you think the scale will tilt and they will be down when the situation is done? Because if you believe that, statistics tells us you should be right eight out of ten times on either side. But you know what Polite said? I'm just going to pretend I'm only going to be right two out of ten times. This is my BPB 10 system. It's more in-depth. But I need to know if I can take whatever the winning percentage is, if I flip what the winning percentage is and I still win, 
if I'm just right once or twice based on flipping the winning percentage. So if the winning percentage is 8 out of 10, I'm flipping my expectation to 2 out of 10. And if 2 out of 10 still makes me more money on just being right once, hmm. then it's worth me spreading my $30 across 10 things. And if I lose my $30, then fuck it, I lost $30. But if I win, I'm winning thousands of dollars because of my $30 investment. What the hell is wrong with people out there? When people tell me about the losses, you got to get, I'm like, yo, fam, you got to tell that to people that don't know what they're talking about. You cannot talk to me and tell me, yo, tell them about the losses. Tell them about the, yo, let me explain something to y'all real quick about losses. I took $500 for my students. We play a game on Instagram. <clears throat> when you join my course during the week, I show everybody I'm throwing some money out there. And my only interest is to make 10 cents for 20 cents. I threw $500 out there. <clears throat> and I threw $5,000 out there. I just show, show the family I'm on that time. I throw $500 out there. I'll repost it today, too, on my story. I put $500 out there with my intention to only make 20 cents. I buy something, and when it goes up 20 cents, I pay for it. So I bought <clears throat> So I spent $500 on a $10 plus dollar stock. No, $9.95 stock. I put, I bought 50 shares of a $9.95 share of American Airlines. <clears throat> Posted it. I said, who want to play with me? That means I just put my money up. Who want to play with me? And so the $500 I put up there, I sold, and I made $23 from it. This means if I put $5,000 there, I would have made $230. Well, let's get out of there. That's the expensive stock. Let me do it differently. There's a stock that costs a dollar a share. Plenty of them out there that cost less than a dollar. It costs a dollar a share. I buy $500 of shares worth $1. So I have 500 shares. But we all talk about losses. And I'm telling you, there's no such thing as a loss once you win. When you do it the way I teach it, you don't lose. We, nah, we say you can't lose on the stock market. You have to be an idiot to even accept the fact that you lost if you learn from me. Because I, my interpretation of loss is just like this. In law, a friend is one who's willing to invest in you or one you're willing to invest in. On the streets, a friend could be any damn thing that you feel emotionally. Okay? And, and in a relationship, a woman wants a sense of security. That can mean anything relationship-wise. But in law, a security is a paper certificate that attests to ownership and equity as in the case of a stock or ownership of a bond as in the case of a debt obligation which has tradable derivatives. That's what that is. Okay? So here's the conversation I got to have with people because the dichotomy to these words. So people talk about saving, and in my world, saving means investing in something that's definitely going to yield me a higher return. Other people say it is put money to the side until I go to it to make it less money than it is. Words are our GPS to reality. In some instances, we might have to adjust the meaning, but in most instances, there's a more powerful rendition of the very same. Once you change and, uh, or you switch into a new genre of information and study its nomenclature, you'll wind up coming across words the way it's supposed to be used. You may live in a household. Some of you say you live in a household. In economics, what's a household? In economics, a household is a, an abode that consists of three generations that live there. The grandparents, their children, and their children's children. In economics, that's what a household is. They put these things in economic terms and then teach us to be a spiritualities. That can mean any of a number of things to religious people. But when you look up the word spiritualities, you'll find it is the property acquired by the church or the revenue thereof. So the money and the real estate acquired by the church is called spiritualities. But black people got the brokenest rendition to almost all these meanings down the line that I just expressed. If I buy a stock at $1 and I put $500 in there, I have 500 shares. If the stock goes down to $0.80, cents, I buy it. 
Now, when it goes up, 26. How much money did my five hundred dollars make me? Or if it's one, if it's five hundred dollars, if it's a dollar, and it goes up twenty cents from one dollar, I put five hundred dollars in there. It goes up twenty cents. How much money did I make? <clears throat> well, twenty. How many twenty cents is in a dollar? That's one out of five. One fifth. So every five dollars, I made a dollar. So I can use five hundred and throw it into the market, and five hundred dollars will make me one hundred dollars. And because of this economy, the volatility that word that people use is too dangerous to invest. I only want twenty cents. I only want ten cents. I ain't heavy hitting. I ain't balling. I just want to know: is there twenty cents out there for a nigga that won't put his money up? That's what I want. <laughs> There's plenty of 20 cents all over this damn market. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All over throughout the day. So then the damn thing goes down to 89 cents. I buy it at 89 cents. It goes up 30 cents. That's my marker. My phone is already set when it goes up to 20 cents. Give me a loan. So I may make over 20 cents each time, but my marker is only 20 cents. I made another $100 from the $500 I invested. I do this three times today. I made $300. I do it the next day. I made $200, and I still got five hours left in the market. I've made my $500 back. I could do one of two things. I could double up because $500 is making me $100. So $1,000 will make me $200 because I'm yeah. just throwing $1,000 in there to reel the money in. What I want to talk to you guys about is when I remove the first 500 that I made because I made a new $500. Everything I make after that is Monopoly money. You ever played Monopoly and you came up on some money in Monopoly? How did you behave? You was wilding. Give me that hotel <laughs> on Baltic Avenue. Matter of fact, give me two hotels on Baltic Avenue. <laughs> what can we do to make you behave like that? We have to change your perspective. We have to get you into the BPB tank. System. Hey, yo, I want to talk about that, man. Real quick, I need to this right. So we got to get you into the BPB 10 system to get that negative idea out of your brain that you're losing. Because once you're playing now with the new 500, not the original, anything you make after that, including that 500, can't be a loss. You're just playing the game. Nothing's forever. It might be the way you cook. But what I'm saying is, you can take that same $500 you know, and keep playing 10 cents at a time, 20 cents at a time, because anything that makes you 500 can make you 250, 10 cents at a time. You just got to do it two times the amount. Yeah. At the end of the week, that one $500, if you're cooking like Brother Pilate is cooking on those type of stocks, there's no reason why you're not making 1500 or more a week. There's no reason you're not making 1500 or more a week. Well, let's talk. Polite mind be like this. If $500 is making me $100, I need to add a zero to that. So $5,000 makes me $1,000. Because if $5,000 makes me $1,000, then $10,000 would make me $2,000. Then every time I throw the $10,000 in there, if I'm able to make 20 cents just once for the day, I made $2,000. And if I'm able to do this at least five times for the week, once a day, I'm able to make $10,000 from the $10,000 that I threw in. If I ever lose my money doing whatever I do in the stock market, how much money would I have made using the same damn money for the come up? There is no loss unless you are an idiot, sir. <laughs> unless you really sat there and never took any money out that you was making from money that you made. This is all play money after the first $500 I put up there. This is all play money. And you got to be aggressive. Why wouldn't you be? If I never taught you this, you would never know it. So now that you know something you didn't know, and you've made the money back that you put in there, nothing can be lost from that point forward. Because you would not even notice if you didn't sit on the screen today. I hope you understand the logic. Understand the logic. There is no loss once you won. Don't say you won prematurely. You won when you replicated the money you put in there. And you used the same money to day trade or swing trade.
and you keep throwing that same money in there. You get a better worm. I got a five hundred dollar worm that's making me money. I'm gonna turn it to a five thousand dollar worm. I got a five thousand dollar worm in there. I'm gonna turn it into a ten thousand dollar worm. And if I ever be blessed and I stay consistent, not to create a fifty thousand dollar worm, then the five hundred dollars that makes me a hundred, and the five thousand dollars that makes me one thousand, then the fifty thousand makes me ten thousand. And if I'm always doing this two or three times a day for a week, then how much money am I really making? Because if five hundred dollars makes me a hundred and five thousand dollars makes me a thousand, then fifty thousand is making me ten thousand. And if I'm doing it two times a day, I'm making twenty thousand dollars from fifty thousand dollars. And I'm doing this for five days straight, twice a day minimum. Okay? So now I'm making twenty, forty, sixty, eighty, a hundred grand minimum. On a week-to-week -week basis, I'm making $400,000 at the end of the month. But people want to come up with all sorts of excuses for why Brother Polite got money. But I tell you all the time, I'm too smart to be broke. And it costs way too much money to be poor. I read and write for a living, people. There's no better service I could ever be. <laughs> you feel what I'm saying? Because I don't read sex novels. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I can make a better business for me to be in. So if that math don't make sense to no one out here, you don't need the cost this week. Come on, I'll show you the technical terms and the nuances to pinpoint the stocks that are constantly going up and down on swings of 40 to 50 cents. I'm telling you, yo, we, we just humble people. We'll take our 10 cents. Okay, I'm talking to you about 10 cents on every 500. I'm talking to you about 10 cents on every 1,000. And being able to replicate the process and build that stash up to get a better worm on the hook to throw into the seed and call the market. And there is no losses once you've replicated the amount of money that you put in in principle. What can be a loss? You're using the same money. If I use $500 to create a situation where I'm now up to $10,000, reeling in $10,000 every time I put in. Yo, listen, 50 grand. If I, if I, if I use $500 to get me to a come up where I'm constantly making $10,000, or get me for a come up where I'm constantly making one thousand dollars. I'm constantly making five hundred at a time. If I use five hundred to get me there, listen. If if I blew all my money, that's because I'm just doing something weird and ridiculous. And guess what? It was still fun because I have to have put some money up that whole time I was doing this crazy shit. If you ain't never seen ten thousand dollars at a time, if you ain't never seen fifteen hundred at a time in one day and doing it every day, every day, every day. Yo, you mean to tell me you ain't putting nothing up? So if you do lose the bank money, and I don't really know how that can happen unless the economy crashed the day you trade them. And even if you did that, if everything went to zero, and no, the economy doesn't just go to zero every year, every five years, and who's losing all this money and what are they doing? I don't even understand what they're saying. But even if everything went to zero, you flatline. How much stash did you put up? Because I'll be damned if I'm making $10,000 a day or $10,000 a week, or $10,000 a month. And I'm not smart enough to put it to the side, so even if I want to lose the money for whatever stupid reason it may be, because I'm gonna put a limit loss when I throw my 50 grand out there to ensure that my 50 grand doesn't become less than, let's say, 49,000, 48,000. Because the more you deal with, you gotta be willing to lose more thousands on pennies, because it's gonna go back up. It's not that deep. Because it's pennies, pennies off a million, it's pennies have an effect to make you those tens of thousands of dollars. So you gotta understand, family, what you gotta really understand. It'll be all worth it. Because whatever got me to build up to that point, if I even lost half of it, which I don't understand how that could happen, because you gotta put a limit loss on what you're doing. But anyway, I just don't get it. I have to say it over and over for the people that keep saying you're gonna lose. I wouldn't understand what people are doing, but even if it happened, how much money did you run away with? before you foolishly put yourself in a position to lose everything you're spending or you're hooking with. I can't say you lose everything because I just don't understand how a person can make a million dollars, 400,000, 100,000 who's never touched that money before and not be compelled to save some of the money. I just don't know what kind of stupid lies people keep telling our people. I believe there's agents on the internet that every time you say something to uplift your people, they come up with these freakish stories to keep you in fear and grief stricken. They prey on your innocence from things that never worked, and they have you thinking you don't deserve the information that you delivered. 
That's what they have you think. Go ahead, my brother. Hey, man. I just, want, I just wanted to talk a little bit about, um, you know, uh, some, some subjects, some, you know, some bottom hey, let, me, let me remind them real quick. Let's, that's I am Brother Polite. That's what class is for Sunday, 6 p.m. Eastern time. It's going to be intense. We're going to go through a lot of different working models. It's going to be real powerful. I want you guys to make sure you get in, be in class on time. But even if you miss it, you're going to be able to get the same links and the same PDF. If you miss the first session, because this is our second session, you're going to get all of that. The second you purchase, you got links coming to you with classes and a PDF. Very informational and straight to the point. No fluff. I ain't got no time to waste. In fact, I think I'm adding two more days to the course because the way my spirit is, I'm telling you, I want to be recognized for removing millions of dollars of debt from the black community. I got people doing affidavits, Law, affidavits for those who I removed 100 grand, those who I removed 50 grand from 20 grand, student loan, whatever. I got them doing affidavits because I'm creating a website where you can go up there and you can see the millions of dollars I removed of, from injury. Millions of dollars of injury I removed from predatory lenders that have been in just really killing our community this whole time, okay? People that knew that you couldn't afford the circumstances that they put before you, but they knew also it was so enticing that they had to, you had to take the deal because you ain't never had that opportunity before, okay? This is how we get into those homes. This is how we get those credit cards. You know what I'm saying? So I got that. But I also want to be revered equally for having, in this particular predicament, the coronavirus. I, they know how our community is structured. This is not the first time we had an RNA virus, AKA a respiratory disease, impact humanity. So everyone knows that the people that get the butt of the joke for respiratory issues are whoever makes up in bulk the demographic that is equal to the lower income community. So we know black people are always gonna be a target. Yes. We're always gonna be a target if it's a respiratory disorder or respiratory disease because we already filled with shortness of breath and bronchitis and asthma. It's already real. So we always going to be the target of any respiratory disease. That's a fact. So we are already targeted because they should have reconstructed the dynamics of the black community. And when they paved the streets with asphalt, they mm. knew it was going to implicate us on a respiratory level already as it is because they know we got to breathe that crap in and they know the blue light that comes from the sun and our technology is going to reflect off of the cement because it's not enough grass and trees to absorb the blue light, the visible spectrum, and it's going to attack our eyes and it's going to throw off our circadian rhythm and mess with our blood sugar levels. That's why we don't leave the TV on and leave our phones on and leave our computers on when it's time to go to sleep because the shit can give you diabetes. That's another conversation because yeah. you have a phone, which means instructions called leptin that tells you you're hungry if blue light enters your, the, the cones in your eyes. It tells your body that it's, it's really daytime, even though your body has a mechanism that when it sees it's dark outside, it says it's time to shut down, go to sleep, and you should not be hungry after 10.30. But if you got blue light coming from your phone and blue light coming from your laptop and blue light coming from your TV, blue light coming from your lamp, any light that's visible is blue light, it turns the hormone leptin on and it causes you to think that you're hungry. And the first thing you're gonna go for because your body thought it was coming out of sleep is something that has sugar in it. But that's another conversation for another time. I'm just saying they, they painted our projects with lead right. because they understood with technology, radiation couldn't go through lead. But then we found out we was breathing in the damn lead in the asbestos and it messed with our respiratory faculties. I just want you to see that the projects is the walls are metal and the frames for the window are metal. So even though the radiation being emitted from the router for your internet, even though the radiation from your phone and your laptop is non-ionizing, which means it's not supposed to be able to push an electron out of its outermost balance, whereby it creates free radicals that attack your tissues and destroy your DNA to make you more vulnerable and susceptible to RNA viruses, such as the coronavirus. Understand that because of the older home models called your projects, the walls are metal. So even though this radiation is not supposed to implicate us like ionizing radiation, because the walls are metal, 
you are damn near like in an incubator because it amplifies the energy, it amplifies the frequency. So you are in a goddamn microwave in your house. <laughs> so the reason why we're talking to you about making this money is because if you don't make this money, cancer is still going to go on the rise. And wealthier homes, you can turn the lights on gradually. And gradually mm. turn it down so you can go past that blue light spectrum that hinders your or compromises your circadian rhythm. We're talking to you about making this money. So you got to have free time for yourself. Because when you go to work, it's a nine to five. And when you go to work for a nine to five, guess what happens? When you go to work for a nine to five, that's eight hours of work. And then when you go to work, it probably takes you an hour to get there. When you come back from work, it probably takes you an hour to come back. So that's 10 hours. They say you should sleep one third of your life, one third of the day, which is eight hours. Most of us sleep for about six. So that's 16 hours. So two thirds of your life, you are working for somebody. Two thirds of your life, you yes. are going to build someone else's dreams, send someone else's children to school. Yeah. Feel someone else's aspirations. And with the one third, which is eight hours that you have left after the nine to five, eight hours, going to work one hour, coming back from work one hour and going to sleep for six, that's 16 hours, two thirds of your life being contributed, a, a contributing factor to someone else's dreams, hopes, ambitions, and their family. You get one third to yourself. With that one third, you're supposed to read, you're supposed to write, you're supposed to study, you're supposed to cook, you're supposed to clean, you're supposed to socialize, socialize with your friends, socialize with your family, socialize inclusive of your children, and you got to divide your time. It would be right if you'd be able to give at least one hour to each other, another hour to each other. But guess what? With those eight hours that's left, that one-third, it's not realistic to think that you can vacate, read, study, meditate, pray, cook, clean, and ascertain or, or, or connect with your lover and connect with your children if you have, and also have time for yourself to just meditate or contemplate. So guess what you got to do? You got to make sacrifices. Who are you going to sacrifice? You're going to sacrifice your reading. You're going to sacrifice your studying. This is how we get out of the situation. Because all the wealthy people didn't rely on the school system to become wealthy. Most of them. So you're going to sacrifice your reading. You're going to sacrifice your studying. You're going to sacrifice your vacation. You're going to sacrifice your ability to socialize on the levels that's necessary and healthy for you to keep a consistent relationship with the opposite sex. Mm. The amount of time that you need to raise your children and actually see how they're changing right before your eyes, but you can't see them if you're too tired when you come from work or when you at work, they at school, and when they're at home, you at work, it doesn't work. So with that one third you have left, so much sacrifice is made. The only thing you do when you do have a day off is you catch up to all the things you don't normally get a chance to catch up to, even if it's sleep you're catching up to. And so, my brothers and sisters, that's not our destiny. We wasn't put on planet Earth to fulfill other people's dreams, goals, hopes, and aspirations. My brothers and sisters, I want to ask you something. Before this coronavirus, the reason why you woke up was to wash your ass so you could be clean to fulfill someone else's dreams, hopes, and aspirations. When you ate breakfast so you had enough energy to fulfill someone's dreams, hopes, and aspirations. When you ate lunch, it was to have enough energy to fulfill someone's dreams, hopes, and aspirations. And when you came home to have dinner, it was because you was exhausted from fulfilling someone's dreams, hopes, and aspirations. And the only reason you went to bed is because you had to get enough rest so you can have the energy when you wake up to fulfill someone's dreams, hopes, and aspirations. Yeah. Two-thirds of your life, you are fulfilling someone's dreams, hopes, and aspirations. One-third of your life, you don't even have enough time for your very own. You say I yell and I'm screaming too much, but boxers have a trainer. You say, yo, why is he so turned up? But basketball players and football players have a coach. But as I told you before, from pre-K to 12th grade, you learn nothing about food, clothing, and shelter. You learn nothing about being a first-time homeowner or how to fill out the application. You learn nothing about credit cards. You learn nothing about balanced transfer options. You learn nothing about transhuman experiment and equal facts. You learn nothing about consumer data aggregates. You learn nothing about FICO scores and advantage scores. You learn nothing about UCC. So guess what happens? You learn nothing about administrative affidavits and specific negative verbiage or opportunity to kill and counterclaim and ability. You see, I don't make these things up. Okay? So you learn nothing. nothing. So guess what? The, the boxer has the trainer. The football players have the coach. 
And when it comes to this money, you ain't got nobody. Nobody took the time out to hold your hand and say, we're going to get you out the muck and the money. No one held your hand and said, you know what? Wealth begins at $150,000 a year for an individual. And poverty begins at $32,000 a year per a family of four, $15,000 a year for an individual. And it's a hundred plus thousand dollar gray area between poverty and wealth. And wealth is the ability to invest one third of your income. Come on. When lose your wealth and still be satisfied with your lifestyle above par. That means you should have at least 50 grand to invest. And even if the whole shit go to hell, no one can tell. Not even on your countenance. But we didn't even learn about the 50, 30, 20 principle. 50% of your money go to obligation. 30% goes through that type of miscellaneous social interactions like going to the movies, going to the restaurant, shit that keeps you sane. And 20% for savings and for debt in the form of credit so it can be leveraged towards in, coach. opportunities. Put me in, coach. Go in. Go in there. Put me in, coach. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, check this out, man. Because I want to, I want to go back to the bottom layer metrics, man. And I want to start. Make sure that high enough. We need to hear you. Yeah, yeah. It, it's all the way up. I'm just going to project. I got right? you. Right. Yo, let me tell you something, man. Adam Smith, right? He is the father of neoclassical economics, right? He said self-interest is the driver of economic activity, right? I want to say it again. Self-interest is the driver of economic activity. That means wealth is a self-referred path. You must have financial discipline first. You can't okay, do call. this without financial discipline. I don't care who you are. I don't care what you know. I don't care what you do. If you can't handle a budget of $500, giving you $5,000 is not going to help you. <laughs> right now. If I give you $50,000 and you couldn't manage $5,000, that $50,000 ain't going to do nothing for you because you didn't have financial discipline. Mm. We living in the age of what they call the 30K millionaire, right? The 30K wow. millionaire, you know what he want to do? He want to buy his wealth at the dog on a mall and at the car lot. See, we got a problem. We got to talk about this, right? Because I, I give out information all the time. I talk to thousands of people, okay? But I'm telling you again, it's those who actually put that foot forward, those who actually have that, that, that thing within them, right? That financial discipline, all right? You need to be able to be, be disciplined with money, right? You can be disciplined with money, but have a higher cognition of value, right? Because value, value has what they call um, a subjective component, right? And that subjective component causes you to uh, uh, do valuations uh, based on social imperatives or anything else that you have ever uh, accumulated with uh, knowledge in your life, right? Your your uh, experiences, right? So. You will evaluate things wrong, right? Mm. You 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 you'll go after things that are just totally outside of what is actually going to make you reach the plateau of success. But it starts, it starts with financial discipline. We need to be more disciplined with money, y'all, before you even take hold of this this knowledge at any level. Any level, you must know how to you use your wits, man. Maybe this ain't the way. This ain't the way. That's why we, we, we lock down now when you don't see the opportunity. We lock down now when you don't see the valuation and how it actually could help us. Okay? Help us in the way. You, did, you couldn't read that book before because you didn't have time. Now you got time and you still don't want to read the book. What is going on? Talk, 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 talk. I like the videos. I like it. I like this knowledge. You know what I mean? It's shotgun. This is like a freight train running through a bunch of financial literacy programs. This one lie. And I'm going to tell you, because I know, I see what's out there. But the thing is, it's not even about who's teaching the wrong thing or whatever. It's about discipline. It's about you. It's about what you're willing to do. 
what you're willing to do to better your own situation. Nobody's going to do it for you. Nobody's going to give it to you. I get people calling me all the time about things that didn't work. Why didn't it work? It didn't work because you, you quit. You quit. You only got to be right once. Take it all the way till you can't take it no more. Whatever That's information what you get. Don't that talk, man. Don't look back. You'll turn into a pillow of salt. You got to go for it and don't look back. You understand me? I'm, 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 I understand. You know, you know why I'm so passionate about this? It's because I've been there. And I've got, gotten information from all over, man. But I'm telling you right now, we must have discipline. Or none of this isn't going to work. And this brother, man, he teaches. Since the day I met him, he's been teaching. And I did nothing but take notes when I met him. And sometimes, man, he'd be talking, and I'd be like, whoa. I don't want to I don't want to interrupt him and ask him what that word means, but I know I have a responsibility <laughs> unto myself to go when I have time to research and, and get the definitions of the words that he's using. All right, especially if I think he's talking over my head or if I think I need to research because everybody learns differently. This has to be said because we, we want our people to go to that next plateau. We want you to vibrate higher. We, want you, we don't want you to just be talking about generational wealth. What does it take? You know, what, yo, people talk about generational wealth, but they don't talk about family wealth. You don't have generational wealth without family wealth. <laughs> You know, That's you gotta no build the family first. The family is numero uno. That's what an SFO is. An SFO is a single family office, and they're usually started with thirty million dollars plus. Okay, this is how these big conglomerates, you know, that that it's a family trust at the helm of it, and it's called the SFO. The SFO gets together with another single family office. Right, and they form what's called a multi family office, and then they buy News Corp, then they buy uh, uh Amazon or Apple, or th these are they're at the top of their game now, but like a Walgreens or someone lower on the uh totem pole, and, and or they merge with these companies. This, this is mergers and acquisitions, this is how it's taking place from families. Families first, and then they come together in a multi-family office, and that's your group economics. Not this whole we need to, yeah, we do need to unify. But that's I'm gonna right. tell you right now, we need to unify within our own houses first. That's right. Let's get together first. So if you get this information, take it to your family. Have a family meeting. Bring more huh. money together. Bring the huh. money together, and then now we can have a bigger impact. We can have and that's why we say this. That's why we say this: the corp, the corporation is the cooperation, and the yes. friend is one who's willing to invest in you, or one you're willing to invest in. And yes. Myself and my wife, and my wife and I see a house, we see an asset, and we believe that this asset will make us money. Then we go into an agreement for us to do business with each other in light of that asset to make money, and that's called consideration. And when that asset starts making us money, let's say it's a house. It starts appreciating, so now we have appreciation, and then we set up a trust in the name of our family because a trust, yeah. is property, a trust is property held on behalf of one, so that another may benefit. Okay, so we set up a trust, and in that trust, now we have the provisions in that trust, and now my wife understands how much shares she owns, and we take this to the next level because we can also take this to the trust and have an IPO or initial public offering. Yes. So now we have how many shares we're entitled to. Okay. And then we have a bond, which represents the debt obligation. Yeah. You walk with me. And now we have a security out there because we got use of bond itself, which is Committee on Uniform Securities Identification Procedure. So now that we got a security, we have a paper certificate that attests the ownership and equity as in the case of a stock or ownership of a bond, as in the case of a debt obligation, which has tradable derivatives. And ultimately, what did I just talk to you about? Well, Come every on. relationship needs what? Every relationship needs cooperation, corporation, needs a friend, right or friendship we need security or sense of security we need bonding we need sharing we need consideration we need appreciation well i just yes. discussed all of that so when you're talking about the family my brother <laughs> you know yes. we don't make these things up and we build no, a structure we can understand there's a dichotomy to the words 
that they made us solely and exclusively reliant upon on an emotional context versus the economic context versus the economic nomenclature that we make subscriptions to that the emotional context will find its way in yeah because i guarantee you if you have the means and the necessary if it's necessary to get a trust get a security get bonds get sharing i guarantee you you will have trust in your relationship you will have bonding you will Ooh. have sharing <laughs> it's a fact. there's a fact who who else would you not trust There'd be no one on the planet that you did that with. Yes. Real talk. You go ahead, my brother. I'm just, I'm just vibing because I agree with what you're saying a thousand percent of the way. Yes. It's real talk. Yes. The one love is love. Um, love is love. Is, um, it's busy. Y'all know the model. Yeah. <laughs> yes, sir. The one sister on here. Uh, well, I think it was a sister. My bad if it wasn't. But she said uh, the black family isn't strong enough. I disagree. And I'm going to tell you why. All right. So, uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. See, but I understand where she's coming from. Because go on your bag, brother. Go on your bag. <laughs> you know, we're, we're resilient people, you know, and um, and we're magical in every way. But I'm gonna tell you something straight up. The black family is not uh we're, we're bogged down with a lot of things, okay? And I'm gonna tell you this, we don't really have time for too much garbage, okay. So if you can't unify the family, you got to come with something better, all right? Come with something better. Come with a plan. Don't you come to a black family with some multi-level marketing garbage. Don't you come to your black family with some low-level, low low-frequency uh, 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 life insurance policies, term policies, and, you know, all of these get-rich-easy schemes. See, they violate interest. You understand they violate entry because you know if it's if it's too easy to get in, you gotta be exceptional in that marketplace. All right, but if you have to do a little work to get in, I can guarantee you when you put the work in, you'll get in it what you you get out of it what you put into it. All right, the family wanna see you serious. So won't you just go about it yourself first and then bring them on? Show them the way. You don't have to get them from the beginning because what do people do? They latch on to success. Once you're successful, once you're doing good, they want to ask questions. It's, all, it's, it's like that everywhere. So just be the sacrificial lamb. Go out there and do what you got to do. Go out there and make something of yourself with the information that you receive, and then you bring it back to your family. Don't be bitter and be like, nah, forget them. No, no. Everybody else trying to forget them. You got to go back. We want the rappers and we want the entertainers to go back, but we ain't willing to go back to those we grew up in the house with. Why don't we practice what we preach? Go back. You Bring the information that you were successful with back to your family, build a family trust, trust and put the uh, investments and, and, and build the revenues, and now you multiply. Why do we, right. we can't be dissing our family so easily? We can't do that. We just got to go out there and, and, and make it happen first. It's okay right. to That's make right. it happen first. And then go, I mean, yo, throw the line back down. Throw the line back down so somebody can climb up. We need to start doing these things first before we talk about the crabs in the barrel and this, that, and the third and all this other stuff. Let's get rid of that stuff. And let's just now just go after what we need to go after, make it a, a reality, fix our credit, you know, buy buy into franchises, get assets, build revenues, do what we have to do, man. Go into our supply line and create what they call vertical integration. Like I saw my barber, he was in the uh the chat early. I hope he's still in there, but he could confirm the story. What I told my barber one time, I said, Let me explain something to you, man. How many heads you cut a day? You know, and he told me, so how much is that a week? All right, and, and I'm just estimating in my mind, right? And I said, you know, you, you can only touch with so many people. Do you believe that you could be a millionaire cutting hair? You understand? The answer is no. You can make a million dollars over time, but to be a millionaire is not what he can achieve unless he look at his barber station. His barber station has a uh, uh, oil sheen. It has a pick, a comb, a brush, and a clippers, and none of those things have his name on it. Right, but he know more about the business than most people. So I told him, you got to put your name on the oil machine, my brother. 
you got to put your name on the on the bump cream, my brother, or another produce another comb or produce a brush. Put your name on it, right? And now you can go out and you can sell to the millions of people out there online that may need the same thing that you need. You can now go into uh, uh, and sell to other barbers the things that they need. You're going into your supply line, right? It's called vertical integration. This is how we have to think, maximizing. If we right. don't maximize, if we don't look to wealth maximization, guess what? We'll be doing everything everybody else doing. And let me tell you about everybody. Everybody is always late. Everybody always late. When everybody doing something, guess what? They wrong. Don't go the other way. Whatever everybody is doing, go the other way. I'm going to tell you that for real. That's your first piece of it, uh, due diligence advice I give to you. Whatever everybody is doing, go the other way. Because they late. They late. We need to get there early. If we don't get there early, we done. This brother is coming on here and he's talking about credit. He's talking about stock market. He's talking about the inner intricacies on what makes what, what what creates value. What is going to sustain value? What is what what you can see and project it to the future? Why not listen right now because it's not popular. It's not popular. I'm talking about the inner workings of the business. People could say invest in the stock market, but who's teaching you? Who's going on a free stream and teaching you this? All right, so pay attention. Pay attention, and now you can learn more about it by just researching the very things he's saying. You got to go That's deeper. Right. Go deeper. Take the class, but go deeper. You understand what I mean? Because Always it's, go deeper. It's, 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 it's an imperative. Go it's ahead, a yo. This is a powerful, powerful bill. I didn't know I was going to have so much fire, but that's what we do. We commission each other as brothers, and we vibe amongst each other. We realize what needs to be done. And I know you ain't never go to an economic class ever <laughs> and had this type of torch lit. <laughs> but this is the type of energy you got to have when it comes to this information. You got to really be passionate about it. And when I watch YouTube and I look, at these pop-ups. Hey, you want to know how I made $630,000 over $800? I'll be like, man, shut up. I'll be yeah. just feeling like this. Because I'm like, first of all, you don't even look excited. I'm like, second of all, who are you really talking to with this craziness? I'm over here talking to my people because I say pennies off of millionaires. See, the reason I have so many sayings and slogans, not because I sit here and I think of it, it would never come. It's because I'm experiencing something. I remember when Jay-Z said, I don't care about your apartments or your chrome rims. I got apartments you can put your homes in. When he said that, I said, yo, that's only experience can make you come up with something like that. Woo! I was like, yo, he's, he's experiencing something different. Because that just don't come down like that. It, it hit different when you actually in the moment. So when I'm saying pennies off the millionaires, which is a book I wrote, Yes. Probably six, seven years ago, <laughs> pennies off made it, and houses are the new credit cards, and my books will be released two weeks from now, people, fully loaded, all 90 plus, yes. and some reviews, and some new ones. Just register to that website, whether you're buying the class at IamBrotherPolite.app, whether you are buying the class or not, you go, you register so you can get updates, because I'm just waiting for Apple to approve my app, and we good money. The Android app is, is done. But what I got up there is nothing compared to what's going to be there when we do the actual grand opening. But my books will be released. It'll be back in town. I just don't believe in giving Amazon or Create Space, anybody else. I'm a, I deal with Vanity Publishing, and I don't believe in sending other people's children through school if it ain't our children. So I employ my own. Brother Luan can tell you. King Simon can tell you. This play, uh, <clears throat> Metal World Peace. Different people can tell you that I've published their books using my publishing company. Right. Okay? My publishing company. Right. Their books went out through my publishing company, not through Amazon. <laughs> you know, ain't nothing wrong if you're doing it. You feel me? But what I'm saying is, the way my mind works, I'm like, yo, I wrote so many books, that's too much money I'm making for someone to give me a percentage of my work. <laughs> and now I'm back into the record industry again. Now I'm on a 360 deal because the same credit they give to us. <laughs> When you put out a book, it's the same type of money that they give 
to the artist. They give you some advance money so it looks like you're making some bread. And in between that spill, that spit, they sell as much as your book as possible. And then if you don't sell the amount of books versus the amount of money they give you up front, then you can own more of your publishing. You feel that's when you're really getting into the book game. I'm not just talking about you going out there and just making a little profit. I'm talking when you really put it out a book, they're taking most of the money, but they're playing a numbers game. But I, I got a problem with that. I don't care if I made more money using them. My issue is you're giving me less for my intellectual property. I got a problem with that. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, you help me out, you deserve to get some bread. Yeah. But I, I'm the talent. You ain't going to pay me less for my own work. So I produce my own books. Okay, so we coming back at it. You know, your your brother's making a lot more money now, so I can upgrade the technology. So we ain't gonna really be here. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I got some technical cutters and everything going on. It's, it's next level, but we ship out to the whole world. My books, my books sell all over the world. Don't yes. you know what I'm saying? Yep. My books sell everywhere. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yes, sir. I remember the time you was receiving commissions from the books. And you was just seeing order after order after order from different places all over the world. I'm talking Australia, I'm talking New Zealand. And this was before I was lit on the internet. Right. So you go to the website to register just to keep up with the free classes. Those PowerPoints that I do online will give you the free PowerPoint presentations for the free classes that I'll be doing. You just register at IamBrotherPolite.app. That's the website. So when the apps are actually launched, we have something special for you guys that are already registered. As far as the class is concerned, you go to I am Brother Polite. I have, you have it pinned to the top right here. And that's so you can get your class for this Sunday. We don't play games. We have real estate information for class. We have stock market information, which we really focus in on for the next uh for this class and the following class. But uh this Sunday is gonna we're gonna be cooking a lot. <laughs> we're gonna be cooking a whole lot. And the way that I'm I got a class that I'm actually going to, a free session I'm actually going to post up today on the whiteboard to run real estate and options trading concurrent so you can learn both if you're missing on any one of the two sides. But the goal is to teach as much as people as possible in as real time as possible because for me, we can't really be a success individually unless we see a collective success. In my world, I know if I need to really get something done, the people are going to be like, yo, we ain't got that much money. This is pre-coronavirus. So what the hell they got now during the coronavirus? And what will they have the coronavirus? So my mindset has always been, what if I educate people on how to make money yeah. and they make that money? Then the people that I've helped make a significant sum of money, I would have loaned myself enough credibility so if we wanted to erect, let's say, a private equity group, we would be able to do so, okay? If we wanted to establish our own fund, we would be able to do so because enough credibility would be loaned to me because I've empowered those people. So I'm using education for a, a concept of more grandeur, uh, proportions. My mindset is if I help make people five six and seven figures through what I teach, then it should be nothing when we got to get everybody to put up five grand. Because I'm going to tell you this, when we do the app, I got something special for the app. And what, what I'm going to be doing with the app is this. And you guys can already email and say, yo, I'm going to make my pledge. You can register to the app and say, I make my pledge for $5. If we had 10,000 people put $5 up a week, all we need is 10,000 people say, you know what, from now on, I'm going to put up $5 a week. And we don't touch it at all. Then in 10 months, we'll have $2 million. $5 a week times 10,000 people will give you $2 million in 10 months. When the black community says we have to rely on celebrities to get the money, I totally disagree. I would never ask a celebrity for the money that I know we can make ourselves. How about the people that are invested in an idea do the actual investing? If the celebrity isn't invested in the idea, then why would I ask someone who's not concerned with our liberation? If you are concerned with your liberation and you have $5 that you are willing to sacrifice from everything that you make every week for 10 months only, whether you say, here's my $20 pledge for the month, 
or here's, I'm going to do five dollars every week, we would have two million dollars at our disposal, and then we can vote. What do we want to do with this money? And we don't do nothing until it becomes two million dollars. You see, this is just common sense, and you hold us to it, or we could be afraid and be like, well, you know, um. What if you run off with the $2 million? No, you make it public. You make it public and you say, we got a goal here to raise $2 million. And we're going to vote amongst the people that invested those $5 at a time. And we're going to decide what needs to be done with that $2 million. It's that simple. All we need is 10,000 people out of the 327 million people that they say make up the American populace, of which they say black people make up 12%. Okay? This is going to put us still over 25 million people. There has to be clusters of black people, clusters of 10,000 people everywhere in America that are black that agree with things that we agree with right now. If it just costs you $20 every month just to see what might happen in 10 months, why wouldn't we do it? Why wouldn't we do it? We scattered. We're all over the place. So the five dollars means nothing individually, but it means a whole lot when it's ten thousand people at a time. And damn it, if we did it all the time, then guess what? That's two million dollars in the black economy. Now we got an economy. We got a guaranteed two million going in and out of there with only ten thousand people out of over thirty million black people just here in America alone. We're not counting our people in Canada. We're not counting our people in UK that should be involved because they have a damn say too. You mean to tell me in the 250,000 people that follow me here online, a quarter million people, you mean to tell me with a quarter million people, a quarter million, we don't got 10,000 people inside of the quarter million that's following me? They got $5 a week, $20 a month for 10 months straight to make $2 million. If you whip it, you can email me, brotherpolite45 at gmail.com. I'll create the goddamn website. It'll be up sometime this week. But I'll tell you this, your pledge will be there, your name will be there, and we'll, we'll say, look, yo, shit, we can make our goal in route to $2 million. But damn it, there's, too many, there's several $2 million out there. We should exceed those expectations. We should exceed it. We don't need to ask no bitch ass. Uh -uh, pardon my language, man. I'm just saying, <laughs> the motherfuckers is making billions of dollars and hundreds of millions of dollars and they don't give a fuck about us. How the hell we don't give a fuck about us? It's enough of us. We don't need nobody money but our own. We don't need somebody who made a hundred million fucking dollars in their career. All we want from them is to also put a five dollars. That's what my pitch is. Anybody that I know who's wealthy, all I want is $5 a fucking week. I'm, I'm, I'm not counting no one's pockets. I don't believe we should put that weight on anyone's shoulders who work hard to make their money throughout their career, who fought to get out of poverty, who fought to get out of domestic violence, who fought to get out of mental health issues, who fought to get out of a lack of resources. The trauma that they've had to endure, they deserve every dollar that they got to work for. I just say, yo, fam, you got five hours a week? Niggas will laugh at me, <laughs> right? <laughs> but yo, I'll tell you this, every celeb you see me with, they supported me. I don't got superficial relationships. But guess how polite is? Polite is a businessman. Polite will go to everybody that's wealthy in my circle and be like, can you put up $5? You know why? Because I don't ask for 100% of an individual. I ask 1% from 100 people. That's what I do. That's math. We don't need all of that from anyone. Make them feel a way. And, and, and we show people we was disorganized. Not disorganized, but disorganized. <clears throat> people will put tons of money into the black community. But we need 10,000 people to demonstrate to create an example, because when, pe when people go where the money's at, and we show, look, we already got $2 million sitting here laying and waiting for something special. 
What you think we can't do something? What you think people wouldn't say, yo, he found 10,000 people that legit really want to change their paradigm. You don't think everybody's going to come through after that? But the thing is, we never could get it started. It's too much distrust. Somebody's going to say, but well, why is he collecting the money? Because God damn it, I got the sauce. I got the sauce. I got the platform. The niggas with no platform want to be the organizers. You ain't got the platform. <laughs> you ain't had the idea. <clears throat> now we get the credential people in there and help us make sure we don't ever mess up the money. Secretary but I know my role. I can get to the money. I know my role. I know how to organize. I'm revolutionary when it comes to this economics. That's my role. That's what I know how to do. Yes. So I stay in my lane. In fact, you see Brother Lawan right here? <clears throat> he created every trust that I operate with. Yes. Brother Lawan right here, he's my tax lien broker. Yo, Polite, there's something going on over here. I think you'd be interested. Bro, you already know. Yo, <laughs> Lawan is one of the few people on planet Earth can tell me something's lit. I just, yo, tell me the price, bro. I'll ask you later. <laughs> <laughs> tell me the price. I'll ask you later. I got, I got 1600 I got to throw to Lawan right now. I got six, right or wrong, fact or fiction. Right. I got 1,600 I got to throw to my man right now for a new company I'm about to create. I go to him. Yo, look up. I met him, showing him how to do some shit. <laughs> this man has accelerated. He has accelerated and exceeded my expectations. I'm coming to him for the business I used to go to him for. When he, I'm going to him for the business he used to come to me for. You're <laughs> as well. <laughs> That's right. It's, it's, it's a credit to me being a teacher and a, and a larger credit to him being a student. Now I'm going to him for the same service he came to me for yes. when I first met him. <laughs> Word is wrong. This is a real talk. And my man can sit here right here and he can say, yo, I got a new house because of Brother Polite. Straight up. You gotta tell those stories. So people be like, yo, but can you show me somebody that's benefiting? Because they don't want to count my wives. <laughs> they don't want to count my children living good. Right. They don't count as good people. They say, can you show me anybody that's doing good? But my family don't count. <laughs> so how about my brother Lamar? I just think my man got a, a nicer house. Yes. Got a group income. He's an entrepreneur. Uh, when I met him, he, he was fixing cell phone glasses and, and selling cell phones. Yeah. Honorable. But when I met him, he was in the cell phone business. Yes. <laughs> and I said, quit your job, man. And he had to put a lot of trust and faith in me because I saw how brilliant this man was. And I said, I'll be damned if this man be this brilliant. And I speak to his brilliance, but I don't put my money where my mouth is. Yes. So I said, yo, <laughs> which I shouldn't do that. But you get what I'm saying. So I said, yo, quit that job. He talked to his wife. His wife's like, yo, who's this? <laughs> Who got you about to quit? Yo, you do know. There's no looking back. <laughs> and my brother, with his belief in me, quit his job. And we cooked. And I, I knew his talent. I put him in position. Yep. And that was it. Yep. He's a, anybody that's ever done business with Lawan knows he's a complete professional. Yes. He's more organized than I am. I'm the scientist. My mind is all over the place. When I study, I got an etymological dictionary here. I got a black law dictionary here. I got the, the bacterial genetics dictionary here. Even though I'm studying theology at the present moment, I got 10 windows opened up on my computer. My brain is every freaking way, and I still got to use a paper and a pen and a pencil to still write because I don't always want to type because I want to get back into to the grassroots fire, the energy. <laughs> yes. Luan compartmentalized everything. Yo, like, what is this that you sent me? I'm like, yo, that's my work, bro. He, he like one of them teachers. Yo, go back in there and make this shit eat, man. What the hell you sent it to me? I'm like, yo, bro, figure this shit out. I'm talented. <laughs> I'm going to bring you the business. Fix this shit. Make me look good. <laughs> I go out, I look nicely neat and packaged. And I give you these traffic keepers with tags in it, and you got the, the, the certification of trust, and you got the IRS confirmation form, and you got the 12, 15 page trust taxes, and you got the notary document, and you thinking that's me. That's what we want doing that. <laughs> that's how this thing works. 
we take each other's talent and we complement each other, we move forward. But it takes a great deal of humility as men, and people don't understand something about humility, which actually takes on a different word from humble. Because humble is to have a lower estimation of your own worth. Mm. To have a lower estimation of one's own worth. You just look up the word. But as a man, you demonstrate your sigma, your sigma male disposition. I say alpha. Sigma's above alpha. Mm. As a male, you demonstrate your sigma male disposition when you exercise humility when confronted with adversity. So in other words, I am aware of what I can do to somebody because I grew up boxing. And I also did Krav Maga for two years. Mm. I'm confident that I will whip somebody out. But guess what? If someone encroaches me, if someone is belligerent, if someone ensues me with violence or violent talk or action, I contemplate what it is that I may forfeit in exchange to compromise my peace, to prove to this person or the spectators that I can beat them up in a fight. Mm. And when I make those lower emotions subside through my own reconciliation, I have demonstrated the highest art form of being a man, yeah. which is humility when confronted with adversity. Yes. Mm. Thus, you can take 10 years to build a reputation and lose it in 10 seconds. And that peace that I have developed, this refinement to be on this level of discipline, yes. did not come overnight. I cannot microwave this. No, sir. It took me years to get to this place. And one person can take you off that damn course. But you know what? You can't say it. Others can say it. You got to say, I took myself off. Mm. Because I'm a master of my own destiny. I will not be moved by nobody. I will not tell someone they make me mad. No one has that power over me to make me do anything that I didn't suggest to myself I should do. Right. So as a Sigma male, I demonstrate my masculinity at the highest level by exercising humility when confronted with adversity. Because I know I can win. And now I have to defensively drive on planet Earth. I have to protect people from themselves. Because there's things that I've been through in my life I would never have to question if I would do it because I've done it before. Right. While other people are guinea pigging me to see if they actually got the heart to do it the first time. <laughs> the people that really been in the streets and really put in pain, they're the first ones that don't want no smoke because they've done the prison time. They face the possibilities. Oh, they've already lost friends and family due to their emotion. And it's just too much at stake. So when I see a person that's out of line, when I see a person that has no self-control, I see a person mm -hmm. and I say to myself, that person's suicidal. Mm -hmm. But suicide hurts. To cut your wrist is too much pain. To jump off a building it's too much pain. Too much. <laughs> to jump in water, dive in the water, and purposely stay there. And breathe until you die, till you drown. It's too much pain. To go in a burning building. That place. To be willing to do that and die under those circumstances will hurt too much. So we like a delicious suicide. We wouldn't mind eating things that take us out of this planet Earth because it tastes good in the process. Mm -hmm. We wouldn't mind smoking something that can kill us because it feels good in the process. We want a delicious suicide. And what else can be more delicious than the hatred of your brother or your sister? Good. Tasty. Because you don't got to feel it like you feel it when you cut your wrist. You ain't got to feel it like you feel it when you jump off the building. So people want to commit suicide, but they don't want to feel the pain. So what they will do is test you to see if you can take them out their misery. Right. So they at least believe it here would be you. So you got to be careful when people tempt you to understand that these people have quit on life already. Mm. But they're too scared. They're too afraid to afflict themselves. So they're looking for other people to body them. They're looking for people to take them out of this existence. Right. And it's always the unsuspecting person 
that's been working hard on building themselves that has to be challenged by these freaking idiots. Mm. I get it. Month to month. Yo, let's fight. <laughs> I'm 36 years old. I ain't got no business fighting. Oh. Nobody. I'm 36. I'm glad I've arrived at a day in my life where I can say, yo, that shit sound cool. You got other people. Yo, you need to be a man. You just disrespect your wife. If you're a real man, you'll fight. Last time I was a man because someone disrespected my wife, I was facing attempted murder. Mm. And right before that, you can look me up. I was never locked up for a weed charge. You can look me up. Goodness. I was all hard. I was released on my own recognizance. I've been locked up most of my damn life in, in juvenile detention facilities, shelters, and Rikers Island, the largest prison population in America. I had to fend on these streets when I had no home. Mm. My cops left me at age eight on my birthday. My mom died the week that I met her. When I turned 17, I had seven days with her. Seven days. My family could attest to this. I've been through entirely too much. So I'm already proven because I survived. There ain't a man here that can test me gangster to make me feel like it'd be a compliment to what I already survived. <laughs> yes. I, I just see him on a path that I already was on. He probably 20 steps away. He probably just starting the path that I already was on. The only thing I can do is pray for this brother. The only thing I can do is wish him the best because when I was in that space, I needed help. And that person themselves, whoever may attempt to challenge me or try my spirit, they need help. So I consider, you know what, they, they have daddy issues. No father was probably around for this young man. But I understand it's the spirit of a young man and his competitive nature to antagonize who he wants to become later on in his life. Mm. We're most confused. When we're confused, that's normally how that works. Because infatuation is infatuation. <laughs> and you can love somebody so much until the time you attempt to demonstrate what they are great at, and it doesn't work when you demonstrate that now it transmigrates, that love transmigrates into hate because we know there's really no opposites, just things varying on degrees of a pole. <clears throat> so even when I get hate, I know it's just a vague interpretation of love. That's what I understand. Ain't nobody hate me out there. They all love me. People tune in to me to say negative things. I ain't never turned on the TV in anticipation to watch something that I don't like. I don't that like. I know. I ain't never turned on the TV and said, damn it, the show is about to come on at eight. Gotta leave me alone. I want to be two minutes early for it. Yes. <laughs> I ain't never experienced that in my life. <laughs> don't get it. So walk with me, family. This is real game right here. This real game, this real talk, because I don't want you brothers and sisters out there falling victim to negative people that really want out, but they're too weak to afflict themselves, so they'd rather afflict others in hopes that their antagonism can provoke the negativity that is necessary for you to afflict them, because that's all they think they want, because they don't know better. This is some real talk, family. You see, this is all money. Everything we're talking about right now is all money. Because it's great value in what we're talking about. And some people are so poor, all they got is money. Mm. Yo. We got to really wake up. Yo, say that again because we chase money too much. We must chase value. Go ahead. Say that again, bro. <laughs> some people are so poor, all they got is money. Yep. Yep. That's all they got. Yep. You so can like tell, I man, because people <laughs> always want to ask that question. You know, well, how much money you got? Are you rich? Are you wealthy? I'm gonna tell you what wealth is. I'm let me let me let me put you I've on real wealthy. quick. Uh, someone who is wealthy, right? They can do whatever they want to do with their time. Okay, that's wealth, right? I can, I, yo, I I went, you know, I was riding my bike one day, twelve twelve o'clock in the afternoon, and it was seventy boats out on the water, right? Seventy boats at high noon, my man. Yo, that was wealth right there. Because at 12 o'clock, most of y'all was at work. Most of the doggone United States was at work, okay? But if you could do whatever you want to do with your time, that's wealth. See, I take my kids to school. I pick them up. I 
when I pick them up, I do their homework with them. After I do their homework with them, I cook for them. After I cook for them, I I play with them. We go outside, whatever we going to do, and then I tuck them in. That's every day. See, how many days can you do that, right? And 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 not be shaken from what you lost from not going to work. See, that's wealth when you can do whatever you want to do with your time. Don't you tell me about a, a, a dollar amount. Tell me what you could do with your time because we don't get no more time back. We don't get any more time allotted to us at any, I mean, just think about it for one second. 24 hours in a day. Are we getting any more of it? Can you do what you want to do with those 24 hours? That's well. It ain't no pseudoscience. Ask somebody who's wealthy. Go ahead, my yeah, brother. Listen, I'm call this five to a million by the end of tonight. But if, if you just need to make sure your poll count be in, you're going to see it. But by the end of tonight, uh, probably what time is it? Probably by 9, 10 p.m. Mm -hmm. I'll say 12 midnight. It's going to start history. By 12 midnight, when you go to I Am Brother Polite Guy app, you're going to see a link there that's going to say five to a million. All right? Five to the millions. That's what we're going to call it. Five to the million. <laughs> and what we're going to do, we're going to start the process, and then we'll create the site officially to ensure that everybody that put five towards the millions will be accounted for, because we're going to be the people. Think about it. And this coronavirus, when this is all over, y'all may not understand. We gotta, you know what, Luan? We really need to do a separate stream uh -huh. to express, like what you was talking about earlier, not on the live, when we was building, we yeah. was talking about crude oil and understanding that most people are not driving their cars as much. They're not driving to work, they're not driving to the store, oh, wow. they're not yeah. driving to uh, the movies. That, that all isn't the same necessity that it used to be. Mm, right, right, right. So we right. can't just sit there and let lay the waste. Right. So now we have to find unique ways to store the oil. Like there's so many things economically right. that we're not understanding. If you don't understand what a GDP is or what what gap is generally accepted accounting principles, right. if you don't understand what the domestic product is and what is the things that we make the most money off as a nation, right. and how that has been on decline. Because yeah. education and real estate make up a significant amount of our gross domestic product. Yes. And yes. clearly, no one's getting educated or going to school. And yes. let me tell you, yes, you, yo, yes. a lot of businesses, a lot of businesses are going out of business. And what you got to understand, a lot of necessities, toilet paper is more necessity than gasoline. When that happens, something because people are panic shopping, right? Yes. And the problem is that misappropriation is causing a lot of chaos and conflict. So in turn, your life is going to change, even though we've only been in this coronavirus paradigm for inside of three months it'll take over two years to start seeing significant repair mm -hmm. in many of the sectors oh, yeah. that we haven't considered until our lives start being impacted so yes. what I'm saying about that is this right that's right when we talk about group economics and making sure we have billions of dollars at our disposal it's so we don't get one of those tricky things where someone gives us a twelve hundred dollars stimulus check, but we find out it's really our taxes for next year. Like we don't want to be in that situation. We might need emergency relief, and it's going to be us that has to rely on the emergency relief. You never know what we may have to come to terms with and say as a community. Yo, you know what? If you want to have a certain level of tier into this fund, invest more. But if you just on the bottom tier, you still have a right to vote. But we got to be in a space where we understand all we have is us, and we got to stop putting other people in a position for us to cry and complain to them and still get no results. We got to figure something out, family. We might have to be able to fund certain of our children to go to school to make a suitable proficiency at certain degrees and get certain credentials so we got to have a voice or face in the lab to protect our best interests. Yes. We, we may have to lobby. We may have to have someone lobby on our behalf and fund that campaign. We may need to create an alternative school paradigm that needs to be funded. Seriously. Yes. Not no, 
not no tricky stuff, yeah. some real, you know, it, even if it is, and when I say alternative, I'm talking about something as simple as investing in tax leads. Right. And then embarking upon the acquisition of those properties in which people fail to redeem, and then turning those houses into schools. Yes. That's a cheap way to do it. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Buy homes and turn them into schools. Yes. And then we create an endowment fund trust and allocate some of those commissions based on our investment interest and based you know what I'm talking about, brother. Yes. Am I going crazy or what? No. I'm just <laughs> kidding. We talk about nation building. Yes. That's what we talking about. We talk about nation building. We need to really put things into proper perspective. Yes. I'm too smart to be broke. I'm already I'm already answered for. Yes. I don't need to be granted my personal life. But mm -hmm. I need that money in terms of our personal life. Individually, right. I'm pretty good. But what good is me being good individually if the masses of my people are struggling? What kind of life is that? Right. Those same people want to criminalize me. Yes, absolutely. I, I want my children to be able to live amongst other black people that's prospering. I don't want to yeah. just have to live around non-black people because I have a higher social status. Right. That's trash. That's trash. So the goal was to get me right so I can have the free time and the leisure to do these type of streets. Mm -hmm. That was the goal. Right. You know what I'm saying? So we got to do this, family. We got to do this. This ain't no game. This is some real talk. Yes. If you with it, we do a lot of chat and a lot of talk. Yo, you ain't got five dollars a week. <laughs> Ask some people on the street. Hey, and get the rest of the two dollars or the three dollars. Who freaking cares? But once ten thousand of us do it, times ten months. We got $2 million. Yes. So you know how much $2 million is out there for our community crying, bitching, moaning, groaning, and complaining that nobody doing nothing for us? We want reparations. We can conduct self-administering reparations. Let's call it that. Let's call it self-administering reparations. Yes. Okay? S-A-R. You know how they got the, the uh, secure acute respiratory syndrome, SARS? <laughs> yeah. let's, let's, let's take a negative yeah. and make it <laughs> okay self-administering reparations let's call that SARS mm -hmm. you feel what I'm saying Yes. let's really put this into proper perspective because we gotta have an exit strategy fam. we done into some deep shit but the exit strategy is so opaque we don't know what are we gonna do as a black community we gotta have enough money and funding to create housing for our people through investing from properties that get lost and, and own a whole freaking community through that. I'm telling you, there's opportunities that's right before us in this time. And if we employ group economics, what I'm able to do individually is nuts. But if we employ group economics, we can salvage the remains of the black economy and take it back where it used to be. From 10,000 people. And I know this more. I know personally, I'm gonna make this my life ambition. I know personally. I know personally, yo. Personally, I personally know I'm better than only organizing 10,000 people times $5 a week for $2 million every 10 months. I know I have to be able to reach clusters of 10,000 people all over the world that can afford $20 a month. We gotta do this. We got to. Otherwise, we deserve what the hell we get. I do free classes so you can learn whether you invest in my classes or not. I give you enough information so you can go out there and do your thing. We don't play games with this. You can get out there and get into the game. Stop being so skimp. Well, you know, if I pay $100 for the class, I don't, yo, listen. You know what's wild? I got to teach people about investing a year out because it costs pennies. But when people are conditioned to get their money every week or every two weeks or every month, it's hard to talk to them about every year. But a year from today, you're going to remember I taught you this class and you could have put pennies into the future a year from today to have the right to make thousands of dollars. It's, it's, it's psychological. You got to break out of it and know that you deserve this. Don't sit here and watch this class and, and not realize your higher consciousness magnetized you to hear this message for a reason. Because it could have been another world star video. It could have been another woman showing her ass. The media is saturated with that information. 
But how many times over have you been given the opportunity to actually learn a bunch of powerful terms and words being our GPS to our reality can shift us into another paradigm of success that we would never be able to conceive until we start making the knowledge that we learn applicable. I did not waste your time today to give you gossip. I did not waste your time today to speak ill of another brother or sister. We took time out today of our schedule just to have a bill because we was talking. We, I was in the car having such a great bill with my brother and talking to him about our business. And I'm like, all right, so how much money I got to send you? He's like, yo, $1,650 or something like that. I'm like, all right, bet. I got you. I'm going to throw that over there. This is what I need for you to do. Oh, and I need you to set up this company for me real quick, King. Yo, okay, bet. We just talking that talk. And we started really talking about the state and condition of black America and abroad, black people in general. And we say, yo, we deserve what we get as a collective because we don't make preparation. And we just started building. And I said, yo, fam, if you got some time, let's just go on the live stream in like 10, 15 minutes. <laughs> yes, <sir. laughs> Our conversation with each other. Because we've gone off the same way. You seen us here? <laughs> and we you know, good, No, we talk the same way, but it's just him and I. My wife be looking at me like, yo, y'all are fucked. <laughs> <laughs> so, so to make it look good and to clean it up, I said, yo, we do it live. We ain't going to look crazy. <laughs> <laughs> what? We go live, we can't say nothing. Cause now she know we doing this to the thousands of people that's gonna watch it. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> you feel me? I think y'all I appreciate you guys so much. Make sure you follow my brother, uh Lawan. Can you just tell him how to follow you on Instagram? Real yes, quick? you can follow me on Instagram at AVF now. And you can follow me on Facebook at A V. Facts and figures. All right. Thank you. And you know, you know my motto: love is law, family is business. You got a lot today, man. Because I love what we said. I, you know, when I have classes like this, I gotta watch them back because I inspire me, and I be learning from me. Whether y'all realize it or not, because sometimes the information just come through. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Just right, like right. our children. Right. You know. They don't come from us, they come through us. You, you feel what I'm saying? And that's how this information is, because just like people are conceived, information is conceived too. Yes. We get birth to thoughts, and they don't come from us, they come through us, just like our children. So I, a lot of times, have to do a review of what was said, because when you're in the spirit and emotion, <laughs> you yeah. watch it, you go, oh, woo! Yeah, I take notes of that. But sometimes I'll be saying a saying, and I'll be like, yo, that's deep. And it's crazy when you watch yourself and you be like, that's deep. <laughs> yeah. Because you're in a zone and right. you're being used to communicate to your people. This is spiritual. I'm telling y'all. Super spiritual. Amen. Yes. <laughs> you feel me? <laughs> it's like, yo, you are being used to communicate deep and profound thinking to the point you can't even take credit for most of it or any of it. Because when the opportunity presents itself, your ancestors will use you as a vessel to communicate what we have been long overdue. Yes. True story. Yes. True story. Yes. Absolutely. So that's why sometimes I can sit here in awe of myself, not to talk narcissistic or be arrogant. Sometimes it's like, yo, I don't even recall communicating like that or saying all of that the way I said it. Or, yo, what was that from? <laughs> <laughs> that's right. dope. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right. So yeah, man, I, I appreciate you guys. We feel you because it wouldn't we wouldn't be so turned up for so long. Luan don't always feel like that. If he, if he always feel like that, it would be fake. You don't always see me going in like that. I go in different ways. But if we did it all the time like that, that would be fake. It's it's the spirit, it's the mood, it's the energy, it's the vibe, it's the collective that happened to be on today that brought this out of us. Yes. This is powerful. I hope Instagram allows us to be up so that way I can save it. Cause they do tricky stuff and go down. Like <laughs> a lot of people was asking to save it. I, I don't even man, I don't be knowing. I don't even do it. But well, you know what? I, I just got this phone and it has a screen recording application. So it literally records as you see it. Oh, that's right. And yes. that's how I'm doing it. And so what you can do is probably download an app that says screen record. Okay. A screen recording app. And it's a wrap. You know, this new 5G technology is making the impossible happen. <laughs> you know Don't say 5G. People jump on here and go off. 
not only I can save the family, I'm saying after it's uploaded, if, if they allow it to stay up, I can screen record it and anybody else who has a screen recorder. You know, I got to assign somebody to do the screen recording, man, because yeah. I got somebody that does my Facebook for me. I need somebody that could be out there and always record these Instagram lives because it's powerful. But anyway, go to IamBrotherPolite.app. Yes, sir. And, man, I appreciate y'all. If you want to make your pledges, you go to uh, go to IamBrotherPolite.app website. And tonight, we'll have a $5. We'll create five and we'll create 20 dollar donation opportunities so you're covered for the month and then you can get the system what we'll do in time is create a system for it to be recurring to be debited or you just do it manually i'll talk to my my web administrator and tell them to get on top of it create a site but for now grass it up we're going to just add that button there to i am brother polite dot app it'll be there before 12 midnight guaranteed and it's going to be called sars <laughs> donate towards SARS. Self administrate uh, self administering uh reparations. You know, and I think that's very unique because this coronavirus is akin to SARS and it's inspired this mobilization of our people. So I think it's a hell of a narrative. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's one heck of a narrative. One heaven of a narrative. Part of my language, the words are GPS and reality is one heaven of a narrative and we're gonna raise heaven on earth. And I thank you guys for listening. And don't forget that the class is there. The class is $99. We're going in this Sunday. It's going to be very technical. Got to get my, my pumpkin in. Prepare the DNA. Because antioxidants have available electrons to donate to unstable atoms. That's missing an electron called free radicals that attack the tissue and destroy the DNA. So when consume something that has antioxidants, it donates electrons to make the atoms stable. That's what it does. And then you no longer have free radicals and you no longer have the DNA damage and the tissue damage that takes place. Just, just an example of what I'm doing. I don't fake this stuff, man. This is what I live my life like this. If I, if I got to be in front of a computer for a long period of time, I make sure I got a bunch of black, blue, red berry, because each one of those antioxidants based on their color do specific repairing. You know, and donate electrons to specific atoms that become free radicals when they're unstable. And remember, when an atom is unstable, then it strips another atom nearby, which strips another atom nearby of their electrons, and so forth and so on. And then now you have a declination of your cells just being destroyed because they get embodied by these free radicals. That's another conversation for another time. But you know, when the opportunity presents itself, I can't always wait until another stream and coin that stream after that information. This is all wealth. This is all wealth. This is all money. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? This is all money. That's all this is. Knowledge is the money, family. You got enough of the knowledge, you're gonna always be wealthy. It's a contradiction if you don't if you have X amount of knowledge and you are struggling. That is a contradiction. And that's why I say I'm too smart to be broke and it costs way too much money to be poor. Having said that, go to I am brother I love you guys. Cheers to the black family. Cheers to the Thank you, to your time. To the you did a phenomenal Good job. Time, I saw everyone. the people saying, your brother's on fire. Who is he? They probably didn't even recognize you. You was in rare form. <laughs> <laughs> I told you, when you turn up, you a different force, my brother. I'd be like, I'd be so like, yo, I'm signing up. If you got an organization, I'm getting behind that. Yeah. <laughs> Very few people motivate me like that. But when you when you talk that economics, you be in your bag, my brother. You in your bag. I love it. I love it. I can't I can't say it enough. I encourage that behavior. It's what we need to rouse our people up and create a spirit for them to do something and do something now. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right. We yes. need that. We need you like that, my brother. We need you from time to time. We need you to to, to go in that bag, that revolutionary bag right there, <laughs> that, that only can touch certain people. Some people are just not amused until they come out like that. Mm -hmm. They're like, yo, let me put this thing down. Yo, hold on. Yo, who that? <laughs> yo, who's talking like that? Right. <laughs> you know what I'm right. Right. So it's necessary, man. Any way we can reach our people by whatever means. Yes. I think to that. We talk to y'all. 
Like we were sitting in a room with thousands of people because I'm used to talking to thousands of human beings right in front of me. So that energy, I conjure that up when I'm building with y'all online because I, I, I know how to tap into it because after a while, they're not even there. I don't even get stage fright. You know, it's, it's interesting because I'm more likely to be nervous talking to a few people than I am to talk to a whole bunch. The more people are there, the more I rise to the occasion. That might be my Leo disposition. But you give me a person or two, and I might fumble my words and stumble a little. But when you give me the masses, when you give me a bunch of people's attention, I'm going to deliver, God damn it. I'm going to deliver. I'm not. I ain't about to fail you when I know everybody's listening to me at this time. Open I got to make sure I give them something that when they get off of this, if they felt suicidal, they revive. I get people who send me messages saying, yo, polite, you saved my life. I was yeah. going to take my life. I promise you, my DMs, my inboxes is filled with people saying, I lost 100 pounds because of you. Mm. I was going to kill myself and change my mind because of you. I look to you for healing and upliftment. Keep doing your things, my brother. I don't care what people say. What you are to me and my family is unprecedented. I get this stuff every day. And I want to tell y'all, don't stop sending me. Right. One day I'm going to create a wall of those type of messages, man. Right. Because I just want my children to see That's right. that this is not in vain. When I take time away from my children, when I take time away from my wives, when I take time away from any of my family, I just I need to remind them sometimes that it's not in vain and people really give us. Right. And people right. are serious about the liberation. They're serious about our mobilization efforts. This is about to be the 60s again if we don't pay attention. Yes. We got the social media. We need to we need to have a divine intervention on behalf of us and administer our own reparations before we find ourselves in a place or at a place of no return. We could end up in the 60s and 70s very quickly. Don't get it twisted. Our lives can seemingly change overnight while you're not realizing it's gradually changing by the day. We're about to have the most advanced technology and the most unsis unsophisticated disposition. <laughs> yes, right. <laughs> Technology is speeding past us, and our lifestyle is becoming more primitive. Think about that contradiction. <laughs> you feel me? What good is all of the face recognition scanners? And what good is all of that? <laughs> if you can't even go outside. <laughs> A play on our conscience so we can suffer from illusions of grandeur. Don't get it twisted. We are not the community of people that's going to be given all the concessions. Trust me when I tell you. Mm -hmm. We got to create those concessions for ourselves. Love y'all. I am both like that app. The one I'm about to call you. Peace. Peace. I am both like that Hope to see you in class this Sunday. Don't make no excuses. <laughs> Once you get this Sunday, I promise you, you're going to be walking in and people going to be wondering, why are you so happy? Why are you snickering to yourself like you know something nobody else know, don't know? And that's going to be because you do know something that nobody else knows. You're going to be over here like, yo, I'm about to really come up. Yo, Pete, Pete just showed me many things to do with my little $50, $100 if that's all I had. Yes. Trust me, I'll tell you this. I'm going to play games, Pete. I don't play games. I don't play no games. Peace to the black family. Peace to my melanated bodies. I love y'all. Peace. Give me a class Sunday. <laughs>